the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let's lift our hands and bless His name. Let the name of the Lord. Every time we show up before you, because we know that we hold you in our shape, fully changed, empowered, transformed, enlightened. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. We honor you. We bless you. We thank you because you are faithful. Lift your hands and ask him to visit you tonight, inside, outside. Ask him for a visitation. For everyone that asked, receive it, pray. Lord, we ask you to visit us tonight. Let it be an exceptional time. In the name of Jesus, let it be an exceptional time tonight. My joy to be back home i'm happy to be back home and um it's been a week full of great activities been happy seeing the hand of god and the mighty things that he's doing i want to challenge us just before we start our teaching tonight that we never get too familiar with the things that god is doing the training of the saints the equipping of the saints is something that we must all together submit ourselves to hallelujah there is power in being built there is power in being trained because as we are sharpened as we are trained then we become more aligned and we become more usable it's not enough to be available you must be usable being usable is a product of alignment and it's a product of training and so I appreciate every single one of us tonight and all those who are following us online. We love you. And I ask that the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. I am ever conscious of the fact that as a man of God, every time God gives you access to people, um, the primary responsibility is to be able to supply enlightenment if as a pastor or as whatever leader head of a church ministry organization you are not actively contributing to bringing enlightenment in people then you are wasting their time it's a total waste of time i don't care what else happens in that church if at the end of every service the people leave the way they came no growth no wisdom no access to power no enlightenment then uh, it's a total waste of time total waste of time hallelujah and by the grace of god we thank god for investing so much of his grace upon our lives such that every time we come we are guaranteed that we will rise from one dimension of knowledge to the other in the name of jesus i'm teaching on the dominion mandate part one 
the dominion mandate i think this is very timely and it's very important that we come into this understanding it's been a phrase that has been greatly used in the body of christ it's been largely abused um, because it's been used without understanding praise the lord and i'm trusting that god will grant us grace revelation chapter 5 we'll read two verses 9 and 10 help us tonight holy spirit the dominion mandate revelations 5 verse 9 and 10 are we there it says and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed us unto God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation we're going to read verse 10 together want to read and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth one more time and has made us unto our God kings and priests there are certain doctrines please listen just a little theological background there are certain doctrines that are considered foundational to the understanding of any believer when you get born again you don't just grow haphazardly you don't grow carelessly it matters the doctrines that are introduced to a believer at his encounter with Christ this will guide your growth the efficiency of your growth or otherwise are we together not every dimension of knowledge is needed at every time it is important that the informations that are supplied believers especially as they grow are strategic enough to be able to make their growth useful it's like building I always give this analogy after you lay a foundation the next thing is not a zinc is that true if you put a zinc you're going to destroy the building you can't say you have a house a zinc is part of the requirement but there will be a time for zinc so theologically speaking there are excuse me certain foundational truths um, and I believe that one of the reasons why believers are not very mature is because there is a haphazard communication of spiritual truths and realities it is my considered opinion and this is also theologically agreed that when believers come into Christ the first thing that they ought to know is to have a thorough understanding of what we know and believe to be the finished work of Jesus that is the very next foundational understanding there's no point teaching them about money there's no point teaching them about service in the ministry if they stumble across a service where that is being taught then that's all right but where you are training and building people there is a system so they must understand the the realities of redemption number two they must be open to the ministry of prayer any believer that gets born again must be open to the ministry of prayer that is the system with which their spiritual senses are activated if you do not give them an opportunity to be open to the ministry of prayer that activity will become very boring because they will become carnally minded are we together number three they must be open to the ministry of the holy spirit now technically speaking everything we deal with in the kingdom revolves around the ministry of the holy spirit but i mean they must be introduced consciously to the possibility of a relationship with a person called the holy spirit they must begin to train their spiritual senses to hear god to understand the word to interpret scripture that's the fourth thing they must be exposed to the ministry of the word the ministry of the word its power to transform their minds then several other things now become very useful when these basics are in place then when you come in with things like kingdom service when you now come in with things like 
the anointing when you come in with other aspects you know the deeper things of the spirit they have been able to have access to a solid foundation but the moment you get a believer born again and the next thing you are drumming them on principles of money financial reward breakthrough restoration as good as those things are they rape sorry to use that word but that is the best expression they rape that believer and put that believer in a very vulnerable position nothing that brings a sequence of growth will interest the believer again are we together now because the believer just wants to receive to sit down and learn i'm not interested or someone just gets born again and you are not exposing them to the prophetic and the gifts of the spirit it looks powerful until you watch them misuse it they will access the anointing and begin to walk in many things but lack of character will destroy it are we together now and sooner or later those people will tell you two months they will tell you they are called into ministry six months later they are already in trouble it's important that believers be guided i am persuaded that this should be the factors that should be examined even in appointing responsibilities in the body of christ paul taught us that one who is a bishop a pastor and that applies to anyone a deacon and ordained worker there should be some level of track record of staying in the house of god i'm just giving us a background this is the challenge with celebrities and the house of god celebrities those who were maybe in the world and were celebrity musicians celebrity businessmen when they come into the church they expect the same spotlight correct the same honor so you look at this guy and let's assume he was once a very worldly musician for instance are we together now and then he now gives his life to christ and in a bid to honor him you graduate him unnecessarily into realms and dimensions he has not afforded he sits down where the ministers are sitting you give him offering help and raise offering he stands on stage and you see him speaking babylon you know that this guy he has not he, he has not stabilized he's just barely entering the kingdom but you appreciate it because he has been a celebrity let me tell you whoever you are when you come in the kingdom you must start and join that line you see that yes honor be given to you for your for exposing your value to be rewarded but there must be that system of building i think this is a word from god to many people already all these hilarious ordinations hilarious laying on of hands hilarious appointment of people someone gets born again in two weeks he's ordained sent somewhere we must be careful it will lead to a lot of inefficiency children leading children babes the bible called them unfruitful in the handling of the word of god and so when challenges rise up for on account of the word's sake they do not sustain the spiritual stamina because they have no track record in the spirit they have not learned honor they have not learned authority they have not learned that there are seasons in believers lives where you have to stand they have not like people like watchmani would teach they have not learned to sit they have not learned to walk they have not learned to stand one brutal attack and their whole life is finished completely everything are we blessed this kingdom is built through a system and it is important please hear me the way you build matters are we together in construction we know there are there are structures that are built by careless architects and builders and you see that structure no stability is bent anyhow a little rain and half of it everything falls down right to the louvers and there are others that are that are solid like the buildings in dubai meters high above the sky and they are they are with razor sharp precision they were built intentionally every house is built by some man but the bible says god is the builder he says and i will build my church the only thing that is built from the top is the grave 
never forget this that the only thing you start building from the top is the grave i just felt stirred in my spirit to put that because i want us to experience breakthrough i want us to love god and know god but there is nothing that will replace sitting down to learn sequentially to grow especially for those of us who probably got born again this year or we rededicated our lives and all of that and we thank god for the kind of grace in this house someone can be born again and in two weeks is already on fire and people see you and say pastor and then you now enlighten yourself from that flattery and say wow that means this is speed no men cannot see the heart except it is given to them hmm? men see the outward appearance so their interpretation is based on what they are seeing ah the last time this guy held a mic in one fellowship the way he prayed in tongues and then you use the construction of the tongues to mean he has graduated in the spirit is a joke the level of stamina it takes to be trusted with people is is a dimension that only god can approve very few people know the level of spiritual stamina it takes to host an anointing and to even lead people Mata, Mata, you are worried and offended about several things but it says one thing is needful hmm? god must work on you work on you that's why you see us keep teaching let me tell you there are people in this ministry by the grace of god and with all humility i can select people at random at random and not not to be cynical most of them would qualify to be resident pastors in many circles and many denominations but they are not even leaders god is saying sit down I'm ministering to someone because you look at everybody around you this one reverend this one started his church yesterday this one this and you you are not even even an esco in a department and you say is it that lord you are not seeing me huh do, do, are, are you trying to say i'm not making progress whoever told you appointment is proof of progress if the lifespan of your commitment in the house of god is to be seen and to be appointed into offices then it's a disaster so you see people fight like politics oh there is a vacancy that vacancy is a deacon and you see everybody coming to greet the pastor pastor good afternoon i just came to bless you and to let you know what is happening behind your back i've got you covered that's a manifesto that's 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 political party when jesus was going to select people that he would train the bible says he spent the whole night jesus the fountain of wisdom knew to appoint men to trust them with responsibility is a serious thing you judge by the eye and see Eliab and say surely this is god's anointed and god said uh -uh, that's not how i choose oh look at the kind of people jesus fasted all through the night to choose you fast through the night and choose weaklings, thieves, fearful people. Why fast? Do you have to fast to see them? He fasted and saw what they would become, as weak as they were. They were already scribes and Pharisees. Jumping and saying, look, just restructure our mindset and that's all. We have reduced the journey. And God looked at a tax collector, wicked man very stupid people and said this is exactly what i'm looking for saul is on his way to damascus and god is looking at him what an apostle killing people you see the way god sees ba let me teach you something if you don't learn this you will make too many mistakes in your leadership and your church there are people seated here inside and outside let me tell you the dimensions they are walking in the spirit probably even me have not entered those dimensions yet they come quietly you see them sit down they are watching they are learning reminds me of how many how students are 
The real person who is taking first position is somewhere. He will write every note with the example. And the person who is second to the last. Yeah, I know that example. It came from uh, that, that uh, book. I, I know this man. I know the book he's reading. Yet he's taking second to the last at the end of the exam. But the one who is diligent will come and sit down and listen. Never promote people emotionally. Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Don't love people too much to unnecessarily expose them to levels. And do not flatter yourself into thinking, I think I am fit for a level. Let God himself accredit you. It says, Paul, a man approved, approved. There are illegal people. The same way there are jam centers. There are authorized jam centers. Correct? There are authorized hospitals. There are authorized drugs. And every authorized drug has a registration number. We call it NAFDAC registration number. Correct? Whether the drugs are big or small. Now, there are certain people who can connive with other nations and smuggle in drugs. Put the drugs and put camels on them. Do all kinds of things. It does not make it legal. The fact that it was successfully smuggled. Those drugs in themselves may not kill. But they have not been vetted by the institute that was put called NAVDAC. That's how it is spiritually. You can get up and move and yet you have not been approved. Let me tell you. When people are approved on earth, they are assigned thrones in heaven. A throne is a symbol of authority. Those thrones are not just thrones like they are thrones that affirm anointings and mantles and graces. That's why somebody can come. No rema, no revelation, but there is a track record and a throne that backs their words. They can speak. They can stand on behalf of heaven and speak and plead your case and turn around something that has no business turning around and you wonder how are they doing it. Brothers and sisters, I want you to preach to yourself. I receive grace to stay until he accredits me. I receive grace to stay. Can you turn it into a prayer in one minute? I believe that it's the spirit of God that just led me to communicate that I receive grace to stay. Pray. Oh, the head of department prayer is not seeing me. Are the leaders not seeing me? Is, is Pastor Femi not seeing me? Worship team, are they not seeing me to give me songs? No, never lift yourself. Stay. For when the season of appearing comes, let me tell you, no mortal man can stop you. Pray. I receive grace. Shabrakato Sadabala Karyatash. Lembreketo Kasubriata Katash. Brato Sobrende Gashobrakatosia. Pray. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. Lord, let me be built to its finest. Let me be one of your finest battle axes on earth. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Not half baked. Thoroughly furnished. Unto all good works. I receive the grace to stay. I receive the grace to learn. I receive the grace to be built. It may take time, but I stay. I receive grace. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will get to our, our teaching proper. But I'm just stressing this. Oh, God is calling you to be a kingdom financier. And all of a sudden, you are killing yourself, trying to wear every cloth, trying to buy every watch. Don't die for nothing. God is calling you to be a prophet. And all of a sudden, you are forcing yourself to see. You are not seeing anything. This thing is not trial and error. Keep walking with God. One day, it will be like a joke. You will wake up one morning into a portal. A vista just opens up and says, so this is what happens. Until then, you force yourself, you will see something. 
and what you see will destroy your life destroy others you will bring all sorts of things because you are not trained i watch people and let me tell you this is with all humility i watch people and i see them not able to hold the sword of the spirit i see the disaster that they cause with those swords it takes a skill to hold that sword the bible says with wise counsel make war it, that you have a sword does not just mean you no 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 solomon held that sword in such a way that they could know which child you, you have to hold it well otherwise you will kill people when you are trained by god as a leader you will know when to talk and when to keep quiet they may expect you to speak but you have been so trained full of knowledge yet silent look at moses a man who was heavily anointed yet he never prophesied he kept quiet when the spirit on him came on 70 people none of them could stand yet all of that was in one man and he had self-control see a lot of childishness that goes on in the body of christ i'm preaching to someone some of those things look like the pathways for recognition you will never this honor let me tell you is a mantle it comes from heaven with a track record you can fake it and try to gather a lot of mediocres around your life but if there is no this this ranking you see increase it is god god left it to himself plant water you can increase yourself are we together men can look at your life and know you are growing preaching there are nine things i won't teach you today there are nine things that characterize the ministry of the world nine preaching or teaching what we call pulpit ministry is the eighth of the ninth eight of it are we together so the ability to preach well is only one over nine nobody gets a with one over nine there are many other aspects are we together one of the requirements is to have the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity you must you must there are times god exposes you to things you have no business going through it has nothing to do with you that is the price you pay for carrying the anointing for the people it is the burden of the people he puts upon your spirit you must taste of it to qualify to minister to them yet there are all kinds of people moving around and will tell you i am this and that i am apostle this i am prophet this i am that and that and your name is emeka i say yes and then the man means that because you said it correctly he is a prophet and all kinds of blunders begin to come you break people's marriages destroy people's destiny because of imbalance all sorts of things i i am a kingdom millionaire i i don't take water in a, in a sachet again i have to use bottle because i'm going far my destiny is far and we do stupid things in the name of i believe in seeing well but faith is not foolishness now let me tell you the danger here is when you look around you you will see very few people subscribing to this pattern and it can intimidate you you are human there are times you sit down and say lord but give me an opportunity to and god says you are about to derail you don't know the honor i'm bringing to your life you now want to destroy or oh, run away from all this balloon success up today down tomorrow anointed today you crash tomorrow no god can give you consistency 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 the average ministry that is started in nigeria eight out of every ten close before the year is finished yet you see the convictions god told me i saw it so 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 our vision i saw this and that and in that vision we are going to the nations <sighs> if you do not understand what i'm teaching you tonight your life will be a track record of blunders sincere encounters that will never manifest in the earth realm till you go to be with the lord i want to save you years of pain are you ready to pray now open my eyes lift your voice and pray open my eyes open my eyes but thou o oh lord had a shield for me my glory 
You're the leaf to rub up my head But thou, oh Lord Had a shield for me My glory The leaf to rub up my head Pray But thou, oh Lord Had a shield for me my glory, the leaves are up on my head. But thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you're the leaves are up on my head. Hallelujah. Listen to me. There were two brothers in the Bible, born of the same father, we understand called Cain and Abel. Two of them went to sacrifice and they thought they were doing the same thing. Listen, every time there is no response from heaven, find out why. Because he said, if you did it rightly, I have no bias for you if you did it rightly. There are dimensions I have not entered as a person. I don't get responses from heaven. It's a sign that there is a level of alignment I need to step into. Because Benny Hinn will come under the same condition and there will be a response from heaven there are there are things i now do and i get responses from heaven that i did not get a response yesterday use the response from heaven to prove it's a sign you've been doing everything around your life there is no corresponding response why continue to flatter yourself i'm not doubting that you are a prophet but i'm saying sit down you carry what you call prophecy you will never go to the nations that way he cannot commit the heart of kings to you oh i'm a pastor call me pastor don't call me brother i'm not a brother i'm a pastor settle down the bible said they shall call you ministers of our god it's not a name you invent for yourself it's an inevitable product of a track record there are many of us already fighting superiors in different ministries they are not allowing men see me if you ever think that way it's a stupid thought from antichrist is from the devil the bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel are we together i just feel we should pray one more prayer again say lord i will wait until that grace comes i will wait until i step into the fullness of the grace and the ministry lift your voice and pray Lord, I will pray. I will wait. I am proud of where I am. My contemporaries may go ahead of me, but I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. There is a making. There is a making. Lakata praka sodo bakariana balaka. Being tried as gold. Tried as gold, the gold of Oswald, the finest of them. Yeah. And is it grace, grace, grace? Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? Hey, a little bit, a little bit. Soon your day will come. Start working you, changing everything. Will you swallow your pride tonight? Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little yeah, a little yeah. Soon your day will dawn. Is that working? Yeah. 
so stop crying around and looking for invitation invite me i can sing pastor invite me to your church i promise you won't be disappointed no no stay in the secret place let everyone go remain there he will sharpen you mm. sharpen you then when you come out you will be like the gold of offer the finest of it finest of it no guessing listen you see i had a vision day before yesterday when ife the great land of ife and i had a vision and in that vision i saw certain things about my future and i saw dimensions of grace and the anointing that made what i was working now like child's play after that vision i just laid down i said lord thank you this is the exact motivation i need because you see when men clap for you you need to see something far that will make where you are walking now look like shadows i said that's right that's right it is dangerous to have a measure of results the enemy of success is the last one not failure because it can keep you i can prophesy too it's a little but at least i'm there i can minister too i lay hands out of 10 people at least somebody must be healed and you want to be given the keys of nations which somebody must be healed one out of 10 is a joke that there is a dimension you enter into that you show up in a place and brothers and sisters is is like is like a charm you move and shift things around this is the bible says sharing is our father glorified when you bear much food you can bear little 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 result because the art head is blunt i look at lives today with the privilege of the grace god has given me and i'm almost crying because i wish i had this anointing years ago i saw people in situations i wanted to help them but i had not accessed the level of grace it took and i look at people now and as great as god has helped me i see dimensions where i need to reach out to people but i see that i'm still bankrupt of those dimensions what have you done that you are beginning to boast i have sons these are my sons these are my daughters where where don't let that pride kill you just because someone acknowledge you and just called you daddy or called you mommy or called you papa it's just their way of honoring your mentorship you are now carried away this is my son son stand up this is my daughter and god is watching you and say leave him there leave him there fast because this guy will be a disaster when he rises you are watched for a season then a thousand cubits is measured again and you step into another level listen this anointing you see the body that carries it must be prepared otherwise it can kill you by itself i'm not talking of demons the anointing is like a sharp knife you use it wrongly to tear you and kill you the very owner elisha died but there was an anointing on his boat don't think the anointing is just something that comes there is mastery it's like standing on slippery ground if you don't know how business is done in deep waters you will slaughter yourself with the anointing because you see when the anointing comes you must understand things in the spirit there are certain things that god can pardon others but you won't go free because of the level of grace you have carried swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands is the key to eternal life it's a little here a little there soon your day will come start working you changing everything yeah. hallelujah I've had the privilege of receiving so many awards many of you never know I've not announced one to you several awards you will never see one on my table I don't trust those things I thank God for them but I don't believe them <clears throat> you see if you if 10 of you write a test ah, huh, over 100 and you get 12 over 100 and you are the highest you can get prize for first position but did you pass 
so you have to you don't just say i'm the one leading this thing how far with respect to god's expectation we are talking of dimensions of graces and anointings that have not been seen we are talking of ancient portals opened up hosting god like gods on the earth we are talking of dimensions where miracles are worked unconsciously not all this jamboree and talking and jacking we are talking of putting nations under the feet of jesus stopping the sun to rise over nations until jesus becomes lord joshua did it when you get satisfied with little results oh she got healed oh i prayed for the woman she got pregnant oh i prayed for that dead baby he came back to life you have pegged yourself and you will never rise far am i wasting your time if this is all we do today can we just pray in the spirit for one or two minutes as an indication of our interest to continue lord i'm not leaving your presence not at this time Thank you for what you have done, but Lord, there is more. Thank you for the miracles, but there are higher levels of fire. There are higher levels of power. There are higher dimensions, rankings in the spirit. Pray, pray. Listen, let me tell you the kind of training and the kind of weapon. Do you know North Korea has weapons? We've not seen the potentials yet. They have been building it. Nobody is scared of what he already understands the potentials. No, we've seen the bombs. We've seen the ballistic missiles. America has weapons that nobody in the world has seen. He said, thou art my battle axe my weapons of war with you i will beat down nation he didn't say you have it you are it thou at my battle axe listen as darkness looms around the horizons of our family and cities brothers and sisters it will take more than good preaching it will take more than good greek and hebrew words 
it will take men and women who will shut down the heavens over darkness just by entering cities not by poster all of a sudden divination cannot work why because an individual aligned enough to host that level of god prophetically you have all of god but experientially he must be formed in you bit by bit bit by bit you can define your limit in the spirit but i'm challenging someone the destiny is waiting for you cannot be changed the way you are i know you have tried but at the level you give prophecy no nation will be blessed your prophecy has not left individuals to nations there is still room for building this is a, a shake up and a wake up there are still people in our families as anointed as we are darkness is still looming around them that's a sign that you are not refined enough are we together you are doing well as a pastor but you know there is still witchcraft in your family you even acknowledge it so what is wrong with that light there is a way that light can be so bright you will catch a revelation that will make you travel home you will say i'm here just for one day shut the door everybody shut the door i found something no shut the door you shut the door and in two hours people drive to your house saying i'm sorry it's me that tied everybody down it's, it's not my fault and it, oh, hold on I, I i will you crush the gates of hell into pieces listen when john g lake was alive he made spokane the healthiest city in the whole world are we together ew canyon no man died less than 70 within his environment where have we gone to that we're making so much noise shouting shouting all sorts i am this i have sons five sons international ministry i went to ghana i went to london sit down it's a call one quality of champions is they are never satisfied with where they are others are clapping for you if you join them to clap for yourself you are not wise let them do the clapping while you do the moving you continue to move lord i thank you for this dimension and this grace but then open more frontiers open more frontiers and all of a sudden a time will come they will say you are zeus or hermes they say this person pastor alpha is not a normal human being again what dimension is this what level of grace and unction is this i look at my life today people send me text messages all the time appreciating the grace of god and this is what most of them say thank you for paying the price whenever i get those things they really touch me do you know why because they make me know that if i continue see if you want to host this grace you better find a way of letting pain know that you are not giving up because of it this pain factor that has robbed us this pain factor this pain factor is too painful the training is too much you will never 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 enter the anointing that way pray in the night you are complaining one hour you are grumbling forget about power god is not a harpalist forget about power 30 minutes of praying in the spirit and you are talking no you can't carry power that way it takes a level of stamina 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 that defies the gates of darkness you must defy pain you must defy excessive food this eating like a fool that destroys people you are on a mission going somewhere if you cannot tame your stomach you can't tame any demon eat anything anyhow i'm a human being man must work look at that kind of thinking sleep if you don't conquer sleep you will never host this anointing no. this slumber and sluggishness and laziness you stand to pray 10 minutes you are snoring and sleeping you can gist and gossip for one day but to stand to do spiritual things and then the time for the word of god you open this bible you are yawning 
you better cast that devil it's a spirit you open the bible you are yawning cast it fast your life is under attack don't ever say it's all right i'm just tired listen men are not anointed by luck there is a price i'm i'm showing you a bit of my private life a bit of the price you see that that's the reason why when people go through this you talk about them even in the secret god punishes you in the open they have they have established an altar through the blood that comes out of them blood is a sacrifice hallelujah something came on me for you to please let's not play games with this thing if you are in it go for it go for it fast for it pray for it study for it sit down for it sit down for it don't rush anything i assure you one step in his approval will cover the grounds of 20 years there's nothing called wasted time with him please sit down you need to advise yourself tonight myself sit down myself sit down myself sit down myself sit ah you are papa thank god myself sit down you are mama you are deaconess you are prophetess you are apostle you are this myself sit down then you will command levels of power and you will stand and watch what god is doing to you and you will say my god what is this please be seated in jesus name if i had my way we would just pray till the service is finished because when the water is the bible says you strike while the iron is hot as it's hot like this you strike it let everything that is not god fly out of that 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 making Let's touch on something tonight. But this message is really a message that struck hard. I believe there are specific people this word is for. God is asking you to wake up and Eli is asking you to go back to sleep. You have to choose who to believe. At your level you are anointed too much you know people send me all kinds of things an apostle of uncommon grace and power i thank god for it but i just look at the text and i laugh do you know what uncommon grace and power is all these programs listen let me give you a frank advice program one program here one event here one crusade here one conference here you won't grow that way a, a conference is not kind you won't grow that way many of us are obsessed passionate you have a church of two members there are 10 crusades 10 conferences in one year what are you doing be honest with yourself nobody grows that way you sit down and you are sharpened and filed you know how a razor blade is when you buy a new razor blade you touch it on a paper Pia! that's how it goes that's what god is saying you see god lifting all these our people now worship team gradually gradually when when they all come to me i tell them go and sit down because I'm the one supervising the sharpening by the spirit. You can feel sharp because you cut wood. But what you are going to be cutting are metals. Not woods. Metals. Metals. There are machines that ride through metals. There are machines that cut stones. Do you know the, the, the strength of those materials? You cut through those. Brah, just cut everything. There are others where you subject them through certain kinds of woods. They will hook and the machine will stop turning. That's nonsense and inferior product. It's a sign that that was not a good product. 
but when you buy it you buy something it will cut through rocks and pieces them that's what God is saying to it by the time you stand in all the millions you are looking for you will be so valuable oh I, at my age I think I should have built a house don't worry just stay somebody will bring a car key bring a house key bring all kinds of things and give you be careful unhealthy comparison will destroy you we live in a world that is very carnal I teach you success principles we just finish success systems but be careful unhealthy comparison at my age i am 40 at my age i'm supposed to have five cars and three bungalows okay sorry you don't have it now so what are you going to do about it i, I don't know but god must answer me in this season and the entire circumference of your pursuit is cars and houses you are in trouble though. you are in trouble you are in big trouble learn to know when your life is under attack it's not when you see a spirit appearing there are things around your life that are pointers immediately there are suggestions suggestions that come to your spirit nonsense suggestions unhealthy comparison look at that other pastor he's not as anointed as me that's an attack cast it immediately hallelujah the dominion mandate let's see how far god will help us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we're looking at part 1 in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 man as we know theologically speaking is the apex of God's creation and when God I think uh, media just take this part of this teaching and make a podcast out of it huh? this this fiery how many minutes we spent make a podcast out of it just carry it like a little tool of revival keep it in your phone whenever you sense you are backsliding just use it plug it and sleep while you are sleeping you will see me yeah it's not pride i will help you and stamp every nonsense yes God doesn't show people people's faces just because they are anointed it's a mystery I've said it many people would think it's witchcraft if you see me in your dream wake up and rejoice something serious happened to you hallelujah you must have the arsenals when you are discouraged what do you have in your spiritual arsenal is there a message is there a tool i tell you woe to that person who has not programmed you don't prepare for battle at the war front you station them there are tools whenever i feel that i'm losing spiritual favor there are tools already ah, there are tools there are tools there are tools god gave me tools tools whenever you feel you are lazy that fasting grace is not there i tell you one correct message listen to it in the night where all the noise has gone off the light sit down quiet and you finish that thing you start the fasting the next day i tell you i tell you and your stomach cries you say you are joking not based on not based on what i had you found out you are not reading books again you keep buying them but you don't read so people keep seeing them and think you are reading them and then one day you listen to one message the word is always God's bailout system if you exempt yourself from the word you're already in trouble there should be a word for seasons in your life there are times honestly you are discouraged you need a word that lifts you everybody will not have your time you must learn to have your own time get the word and sit down share messages that build you and all of a sudden your faith rises hallelujah Feel like praying no this thing is on me i feel like praying. i wish i were alone i feel like praying let me tell you how what to do whenever your spirit is stirred don't go to bed pray immediately make sure you can sleep praying but don't waste it 
there are times this kind of things happen to you alone you are listening to a message every time every time because the moment you feel it it's like a spiritual feeling station something is happening prayer is like opening the tank you see that you open the tank oh god feel me let that anointing come let that fire come and then it comes upon your spirit these are simple spiritual techniques that keep people strong some of you after hearing this now you now relax back to carnality you see that carnality doesn't mean something evil you just come down to the this is what it means to be in the spirit your spirit is alive ready to receive like a womb like a woman's womb ready to receive seed see that everything that comes from heaven bam, like a woman takes in you take in something and immediately and the realm of the spirit doesn't work with nine months you can take in immediately and certain things happen and you will birth it out immediately hallelujah the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet Genesis 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in number one our image everybody say image number two after our likeness and then he says let them always oh, projected have dominion please stop the Bible says let us make man in two using two dimensions the first is our image now until Adam we know that already that they were already inhabitants upon the earth right other dispensations carried different kinds and types of humanoid species Adam is not the first man are we together the first man who opened up our dispensation but there have been other humanoid species again and again upon the earth are we together now who had bodies bodies that were spiritual bodies that were not mortal bodies that were made out of different substances there were dispensations where the men that lived in those dispensations had bodies that were made of light quantized light there were dispensations where men had bodies that were made of other substances not earthly and not god's own kind of body they were heavenly body as we call it but then there was a grading of them according to different di dimensions are we together now but then when it came to the making of man listen all other species were made in the likeness of god but never in his image the image of god was what lucifer wanted lucifer was already in the likeness of god the likeness of god means god has two hands the bible doesn't tell us he has um the seven eyes and seven horns are just prophecies are we together now god has two legs he stands on one head there are creatures all kinds of things but i'm saying god as a person when jesus came the bible called him the full expression of the image of the christ so we see him carrying that form all other humanoid species were in the likeness of man of god but man was in the image the image of god is a spiritual quality right the the imprint of his person the very factor that makes god god is where you get the root word kabod glory the essence of god was vested in his image image so man was made this time around not just in the likeness of god but the image of god and then god told us straight up the purpose for making that man watch this he never said let them be preachers he never said let them be apostles please listen he never said let them be pastors he didn't say let them conduct koinonia are we together the mandate was let them have dominion write that word down dominion dominion is a language of governance it's a political language a language of governance dominion is a language of legislature legislature has to do with enacting or enforcing laws enacting birthing them or enforcing the ones that have already been passed dominion means to take charge take charge 
of a territory dominion means to take charge dominion talks of stewardship please write it down so let them take charge let them legislate let them govern let them have stewardship this is god's original idea a great mentor dr miles munro will tell you that's god's original idea now watch this in theology there's what we call the law of first use right the law of first use means that whenever you want to study the context of a word the first key is to go and find where it was first used the context upon which it was used is the anchor with which you will use to interpret every other appearance of it are we together if it veers off from the first context then you must use another strategy of interpreting it are we together now so the first time we see the word dominion it was attached to man the first time we see god making man he didn't sit down and rest later on and then he woke up and said man i don't know what to do with you okay let's try dominion have it and see he says let them have dominion dominion stewardship control redemption as we know was a veering off of the original plan please understand this everything from genesis 4 listen carefully everything from genesis 4 down up until acts chapter 1 was an extra curriculum added to it the original agenda of god had to do with dominion that's why i read for you revelations and genesis everything that is in between came as a remedy system are we together please you have to understand this god's original idea was not to have the fivefold ministry god's original idea was not to have churches uh -uh. god's original idea is not to have crusades god's original idea was not to have altar calls god's original idea was not to have healing services all of those things were predicated upon something that happened we call it the fall of man man's use of his will to defy god's will in rebellion led to other provisions so everything from genesis chapter 4 the law and and the annals of the kings and everything that happened down they were of course there were adumbrations but immediately from that time it was a system to be able to get man to qualify back to carry out the dominion mandate listen the dominion mandate was and is still god's desire and intent for man now many believers do not know this we come around church activities which is good we come around spiritual growth which is good we even come around going to heaven which is not a bad idea the bible says it so we believe it but much more than going to heaven are we together now much more than all of these things oh i'm looking forward to my jesus coming someday the bible says to look forward to his appearance however god's original idea for you was not heaven god's original idea for you was earth it is still earth it will always be earth his plans can change but his purposes are eternal are we learning something so imagine for instance um can i use you come my goal for this gentleman everybody watch this my goal for this gentleman is to go and carry that water you see that water that's what i want to carry so at the beginning of the journey i have stated the end from the beginning because that's the character of god he reveals the end from the beginning then you start leaving that script now this guy starting his journey something happens are we together let's assume that he injures himself through whatever it is now i temporarily suspend i suspend this agenda of him getting there to treat something that went wrong with him are we together 
that is everything that came from the law until jesus it was a fair enough of the original manuscript to be able to bring man back to the position now when you come back to that position and it so happens that this time around it must be in christ listen so when you now come back to that position you are supposed to continue that agenda but when you get distracted and you now forget about the agenda and you are doing other things the one who sent you will never have fulfillment and satisfaction are we together the bible says better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof thank you so there are many people doing several things just, just calm down with this for a moment i want everybody to hear me everybody say marriage shout it marriage. say employment. employment shout it employment. say promotion. promotion say houses, houses. say cars. cars say long life, long life. divine health bungalow just say everything i say duplex cheap prosperity. prosperity hold on all those things are requirements that help us back so that we can continue this agenda in themselves they are useless as far as god's eternal counsel is concerned their usefulness only comes in in how they help you align to fulfill this are we together so marriage on its own is useless to you if it cannot find a bearing to this car jeep on its own is useless to you until it finds a bearing let me tell you one of the most useless ways of living on earth is not to have the dominion mandate at work in your life is not to have the consciousness of God's kingdom agenda yet you are achieving things so at the end of it like the rich fool you gather money oh I made wise financial decisions and God looks at you have you read in the Bible that our works will be tried with fire what do you think will be the basis that means there are people that you will see like a heap and fire will pass <laughs> And at the end of it, what will be there will not be up to my hand. They will be gauged with respect to their nearness to this agenda. Stewardship of earth. Kingdom advancement, we call it. Please, you must understand this. If you don't understand this, you will never be an effective Christian. We have been so distracted. We have veered off this. Prosperity teaching without a kingdom understanding will lead people to carnality and useless living are we together teaching people to wear nice clothes wear these and people claim cars and claim all of this all those things are only useful to the degree to which so we have a church that is full of largely carnal and lost driven people not because the object of their desire is wrong in itself but it has no kingdom bearing are we together so someone looks at a jeep just pass and say hey i claim it and god says okay with respect to what i said god just leave me i claim it i shall claim it there are ways you can know immature believers and there are ways you can know that they have not been trained well let me tell you how to measure growth in the spirit when a man's life has been aligned to the purposes of the kingdom and everything that proceeds from him with respect to his desires are only there to create a platform for this dominion mandate that person is a mature believer are we together if i ask you what are your concerns now Many of us will lift our hands and say, Money, money, sir. Direct money. Just money. Naira, like that. Pounds, dollars, money. Another person will say, Child, child, this my womb must carry a child. You ask the person, Why are you so desperate for a child? You know what the person is going to say? Largely, all the people who married uh, uh, what, around my, my time 
have children some have two some have five some have ten i'm alone and that's the reason why the person wants a child are we together ask someone why are you going to school say are you joking you want me to be hungry abby okay if you are full what is it for say, well i'm for everybody is like that i need to get a good job then another person says i'm not getting a good job i'm a businessman because he went to one seminar both of them are useless as far as the kingdom is concerned if you cannot state bringing your strong reason let me tell you a chip you've heard me preach this again and again the dominion mandate remains god's desire and anybody who plunges into that agenda has commanded both the hand and the heart of god both the hand and the heart of God. Supplies don't just follow your needs. They follow your pursuit of the dominion mandate. Prosperity, long life, healing, all of these things pursue you when you pursue this. Jesus said it this way, 633, Matthew, but seek first the kingdom. Kingdom. He didn't say seek first heaven. The kingdom is not heaven seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and then he says in doing so all other things shall be added unto you are we together it is God's desire that we reign in life and look at me the concept of reigning in life has nothing to do with usurping authority over people please give us Genesis 126 again God meticulously listed everything he wanted us to have dominion over. Let's look at it, please. 126. Let's hurry up. Genesis 126. And God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Read on now. Over what? The fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. Over the cattle. Over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Notice that man was not mentioned. The dominion mandate is not usurping authority and control over men. When you do that, it's called witchcraft, it's called manipulation, it's an attitude of the Antichrist. Every government that oppressed people had a revolt historically. At a point in time, the people were angry. You know why? There's chaos and anarchy because people were not designed to be dominated. They were designed to be led. They were not designed to be ruled. When in Bible days, when God wanted to punish either his people or your enemies, he gave you authority to treat them like animals. So he would cause them to become slaves. He would cause them to become servants. He would cause them to serve you. Not like a man serving somebody he loves. Subject them to slavery. Slavery had always been a way of God communicating his dissatisfaction. Either with his people or people who made themselves his enemies. Listen. The moment you find out an appetite to rule over men. I don't mean lead men. Rule over men is the spirit of the Antichrist. There is a programming that has come from Babylon that is at work in your life. Unfortunately, this system that we live in has designed people to live that way. Right from primary school. They clap for you and give you an award for taking first. Now, the idea is not whether you did well or not. The idea is that you beat other people. So they clap for you in their presence. Now their humiliation becomes your trophy. Are we together? As you hold that award and look at your closest rival and smile in victory and watch the pain of the person. You see footballers when they win, Arsenal, Man U, the ones who win flaunt the cup and you see the other people crying and that cry is the joy and the triumph of the people. It's an antichrist system. Now of course, we use it all the time. Some of you have schools, use it. The Lord help you, but I'm, we are examining the word. It's not supposed to be that way. So, now you find out that students from primary school, secondary school, their agenda is not to do well. Their agenda is to beat others. 
they clap for you with respect to how you trample others that's why malpractice comes in it's an effort to force your way to the top whether you are ready or not so you manipulate ways they even name generators i pass my you see where those revelations came from they look very subtle but they are devilish understandings sponsored by babylon what is your neighbor's um, um, um what is the issue with your neighbor and your life no i pass my neighbor so you now compare yourself on healthy competition every time men try to usurp authority over men it's now going to be survival of the fittest whoever can oppress someone are we together but god's idea is to lead men not oppress them in fact they asked jesus this question who will be the greatest you see the disciples greatest greatest not who will be great who will be the greatest the chiefest of all and jesus looked at them and then he said the, the pharisees and all of this use that method of leadership he said but it should not be among you whoever wants to be great must be your minister your servant that the way up is to serve people not truncate them this is a good message for a pastor's conference because we live in a time where men of god in the name of spiritual authority i believe in authority have pocketed the destinies of other people some of you here are victims of this and you need deliverance fast where a man of god takes your destiny and puts it in his pocket he may be well-meaning but he or she was also indoctrinated into that understanding and they make it look like you leave me you die if i ask for money you don't ask questions if i come to your house and say rice you say yes sir beans yes sir everything yes sir and they use scripture and threaten people it is antichrist the moment you find out that you are forcing people to respond to you outside of their will you are subscribing to another system it is not of god what of workers in the house of god you you must be a worker what of partners you promise this is your suit you are going to start sewing fifty thousand. and the guy says how about I'm, I'm your boss in office i know how much i'm paying you fifty thousand. that thing looks nice it is not god's way hello I know you don't like what I'm saying. We're teaching on the dominion mandate. Many of the chaos and the anarchy that we have around our society, that passion to oppress people, that passion to leave people bankrupt of information because knowledge gives light. Is that true? That's why many times they do not want people to be educated because when they are enlightened, they can know their rights and they can stand up. So they keep people in ignorance. There are systems and nations that the strength of that oppression is hinged upon the lack of orientation of the people. Then we have carved out a name. We call them masses. Masses. And then all kinds of sociologists began to come up with their their postulations to call religion the opium of the masses people like Karl Marx and the rest came up with all kinds of things it was smart you're a sociologist answer it but oh, that is junk I'm sure wherever he is now he has known the truth listen let me tell you you see the Holy Spirit is the oldest authorized spiritual entity on earth today he's worth your trust are we together everything started in his presence till now the dominion mandate is not about usurping authority over people listen the dominion mandate is not about outshining people the dominion mandate is not outshining pastors outshining men of god I have larger crowds than you that means we are taking over the concept of take over must be well defined because for many people take over means to come and push you you had a small church we came and within one year we are the ones in zaria we are taking over we have to be careful because most of what we call kingdom advancement is not only sheep stealing is sheep killing sheep destruction and so on and so forth let me clarify for us what the dominion mandate is it has nothing to do with outshining people it has nothing to do with competition 
it has everything to do with the governance of the earth it has everything to do with the stewardship of God's system to the end that the fullness of his glory kabod his essence his lifestyle would find expression in the earth john uh, matthew chapter 6 we we'll read from verse um 9 and 10 jesus is teaching us how to pray and then he tries to instill in us a dominion and kingdom paradigm and he says give us matthew chapter yes he says after this manner therefore pray our father which art in heaven we hallow or we revere your name then verse 10 says thy kingdom come thy kingdom come your agenda that domain you have carved out for us we want your influence the word kingdom is a combination of two words a king's domain dominion the sphere where the dominion of a king finds expression kingdom are we together now so god's prayer for us is that we pray that on this side of his kingdom that the reality of our stewardship the reality of the purposes of god be established across the earth the same way it is done in heaven it has nothing to do with ministry it has nothing to do with usurping men ministry prosperity are only tools to help us say prosperity is only a tool divine health is only a tool so you see when you have these things the dominion mandate consumes you they will never steal away god from your life that was the mistake of the rich fool he thought life was only about making money when he now made money and built bands he secured himself hear what he told himself my soul find rest in other words i have come to the end of my pursuit nothing else to be done and god says no this is a rich fool tonight because you are useless as far as my agenda is concerned tonight this night your soul is required of you what is the key to carrying out the dominion mandate the next teachings i'm going to be teaching us the different dimensions of the dominion mandate but what is the key the key is in romans chapter 5 and verse 17 another scripture that has not been properly understood by many romans chapter 5 verse 17 let's see where god will help us tonight it says for if by one man's offense that one man now um death reigned by one adam the first adam right adam the husband of eve for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more listen they that receive two things what's number one abundance of take note of that number two and of the gift of righteousness these are the two requirements to be able to execute the dominion mandate effectively number one the gift of righteousness the bible did not put them in the order they should come it just gave you information the first thing you need to be able to carry out the dominion mandate effectively that mandate of exercising god's sovereign control on earth is the ability to be a possessor of what the bible calls the gift of righteousness then number two abundance abundance of grace the bible says whoever is a possessor of these two realities can reign effectively in the earth reigning in the earth is not just you see dominion there are different aspects of dominion i'll be teaching us in other series there are dimensions of dominion authority and the ability to legislate is only one of the dimensions that's not all there is to dominion creativity you see that authority has to do with legislature through your words through decrees creativity has to do with legislature influence through your seeds through your ideas right there are many dimensions i'll be teaching you so executing authority the capacity to speak and have things happen is only one of the dimensions of dominion unfortunately many people come around there and they feel because i speak and some things happen i'm walking in dominion 
you'll be very blessed by this series it will help you to reset what you call christianity so that you will arrange things accordingly and know what your ultimate pursuit should be because there's confusion in the body of christ for many like we always teach and well-meaning and innocently the goal is heaven and that's not a lie but the bible never teaches going to heaven as the end of all things it's not in the bible i'm a christian are we together i believe in heaven but that's that's not it you read your bible the bible talks about this whole earth and the whole heavens passing away a new earth coming and god living where he is i told you heaven listen heaven was never initially god's throne there is there was a day that there was no heaven yet god was alive and was existing the bible says he dwells in unapproachable light he created heaven and put his throne there and that's why he say heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool he is going to move that throne now to the earth so god did not used to live in heaven no he created heaven for reasons that we are going to find out the bible as we know has not revealed to us clearly these are some of the hidden mysteries that eating of the tree of life will supply us when we get to the new jerusalem that's why our knowledge will still be unfolding are we together now we are going to find out because there certainly was a reason why the heavens and the earth were created genesis 1 verse 1 they were not just created just because of adam uh -uh. they were fixed back because of adam god's original idea listen carefully with respect to making heavens in the beginning and the earth what we even call the dominion mandate given to our dispensation is a subset of that ultimate agenda we will find out revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation are you blessed that means there are many things we are going to find out let me give you a few information <laughs> should I say this hmm. some of the spirit beings that we generically call angels were once inhabitants in the earth they had their dispensation are we together and the same way we have what we call judgment day and rapture a similitude of that event happened to them they now are still excelling in light growing and they have been authorized together with the angels to come and serve the saints and help us complete this dispensation angels are not the only spirit beings in the realm of the spirit anytime you see any other thing that is not god and it's not the four living creatures we just say they are angels in a sense we are right the word is angelio a messenger they are always sent ones from the throne but in terms of classification and configuration no angels are not the only spirit beings that are sent on errand read your bible mount zion there are many inhabitants there there are spirits of just men made perfect correct there are innumerable company of angels there are all kinds of things that happen there in that atmosphere of mount zion am i boring you are you learning something when we know this you see even the things we call rema are only relative because they are not strange to the realm of the spirit they are only coming to us newly demons know some of these things i tell you theologically speaking you see when these spirits came you you know the bible talks about those we call the nephilims and other kinds of giants who the bible says were a product of these spirit beings the bible calls them sons of god is that true sons of god who slept with the daughters of men and gave birth to people who were half men and half spirit entities like oak the king of bashan goliath of god and many other people who appeared we see that they were superhuman some of them had six fingers six toes it was some of this interaction with these spirit beings that also taught women what we call the mystery of seduction all of these things were part of the doctrines is what paul together calls the doctrines of demons are we together now it was some of the propositions that these spirit beings brought to the daughters of men that made them to like them and even allow them to have children with them 
that's that's another separate lecture again but just for you to know and to understand that a lot has happened in this earth and if we do not stay fixed upon what authorized our being here we will live very useless lives as a church and as individuals say amen this teaching will give meaning to your prosperity this teaching will give meaning to your fasting and prayer do you know why many people get born again and stop there have you seen people that when you tell them oh i'm praying i'm on a program i'm on a this and that they look at you and say what that's a waste because they do not understand this so for them the entire scope of their theology is escapism from hell and then you stand and continue to manage your life through repeated repentance until rapture comes the day you hear that trumpet do anything you want you are safe you see the theology that's a torturous and frustrating theology jesus said occupy till i come the word occupy does not mean build houses advance with those influence until i come there's something we are missing that's why our young ones are not interested in god again because our marketing of what we give them as christianity is ugly and unattractive so you see a young child of 12 years and now put stringent rules around that child and then you tell the child be born again then the child is born again and say okay daddy what next he said are you asking me let's go to church and he says daddy i'm going to church every sunday now you say i should add wednesday say oh yeah join baptismal class i see that you are too idle then the guy joins a baptismal class then they teach him the doctrines of the denomination then the day for water baptism comes they baptize him give him a, an english name and hand over a certificate and then the child says okay what do i do again say just continue coming to church and he said no 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 let me, what is all this I cannot just continue coming to church. Daddy, I think I have grace to dance. If I see you dancing in my house, I will kill you by myself. My child, dance? Okay, daddy, I have the grace to paint. Paint for what? Serve God. So they have taught you, painting and serving God are not the same. And you leave painting. And you leave this. Daddy, I think I have a passion about broken marriages. Say, don't be stupid. Concentrate and grow spiritually. Jesus is coming very soon. Now, that's a very innocent doctrine. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being sarcastic. But that thing, many of you seated looking at me now, is one of the reasons why you left the things of God. Because you couldn't under... There was no logic to it. Someone comes from being a Muslim and then becomes a child of God, maybe a Christian and all of that, and you sit the person down and the person now says, okay, I have escaped this. I'm a child of God. Say, so what do I do now? Become a worker in church. Then the person is a worker in church and then one day the person says, honestly, I don't know what, what is going on here. What is the meaning of this? Where are we going? Just say, don't worry. Oh, this thing, there's a reward. And the person is saying, I don't understand. Then others have said no god could not keep us like this let's add flavor to it then they swung to the other side of the pendulum and the church has become a place of just fun and laughter and say let's just enjoy ourselves and they say we are occupying you are not occupying that's laziness and idleness are we together so we have all just fun and play around play and play and joke and take the church of god to become like a museum or an amusement park no both are wrong let me tell you when you know the dominion mandate you will be so busy you will not even you will think age is not on your side you see people wake up in the morning with a sense of urgency they, they are, the issue of heaven is settled see let me tell you um we are going i hope that one of this series will look at redemption and i'm going to be showing you that the issue of heaven is not is not supposed to be a frightful thing are we together the issue of heaven is like an admission letter into a university when you have an admission letter it is possible to lose the admission letter but you cannot be in 200 level and all you are thinking about is your admission letter no you have lectures is that true you are looking at something else imagine a student in 300 level and he's moving where's my admission letter and he opens the box and sees it and keeps it and says, ah thank you jesus that's what we do with this rapture heaven thing i'm not against it you know me i love people i love souls but having that kind of mindset will never help you to be effective that's why we don't treasure creativity that's why we don't treasure dominion 
why because we think the most important thing is let me just be careful god can come any day and any time let him just come and find me your your being fit going to heaven listen going to heaven has never been something that a man did for himself by qualification you have to understand this the part where you get that you merit is the reward of crowns is based on your works utilizing the grace that was supplied for you and the degree to which you advance the kingdom to it with it will determine your rewards we will not get the same rewards when a child is born we say he came from where please help me <laughs> now that child is now afraid to go back uh, okay, let me not let's let's not talk about this thing i don't want to make us feel very bad I need to clarify a lot of things. I hope that God will grant me grace to teach it. The book of life, rapture, heaven, the conditions for heaven, and all of that. Because you see, the Bible lets us know clearly that what the Bible calls, what we have called the judgment day, is a season of reward for the saints. The Bible clearly lists those who will be punished, who should be afraid. Why should I be in Christ? why should i be walking with god and my life is perpetually a subject of fear fear those things look nice you know sometimes you have to shake people a little bit to get serious with their lives but it's impossible to serve god that way there was a time i think there was a propaganda there have been many about the coming of christ and people till today people still come up with visions I saw that Jesus Christ is coming in August 24th. And you see people, people sold their houses, land that they would have been rich now. Their children are suffering. Foolish people made stupid business decisions, gave away land. You know, people shaved their head. They were waiting and all, and, and, and all of that. And nothing really happened. God does not teach us to wait for him this way. The Bible already tells us that the coming of Christ will be like the days of Noah. Let me tell you, let me i'm sharing with you the dominion mandate the coming of christ will not take believers unaware did you hear what i said the coming of christ i repeat will not take believers unaware please give me first thessalonians chapter 5 we are reading 1 to 4 first thessalonians chapter 5 is god helping us we are going to find someone and pray tonight first thessalonians chapter 5 but of the times please look up whether you are inside outside i want us to read it together okay i'll read it i'll tell you where to join but of the times and the seasons brethren ye have no need that i write to you so he's talking to who brethren the church is that true verse 2 for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the lord so cometh as a thief in the night many theologians well-meaning stop here and they keep telling people he's coming like a thief in the night and coming like it the bible did not stop here it was paul himself who had his revelation uh, his knowledge of the mystery by revelation are we together verse 3 for when they shall say those who are without when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they 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 shall not escape if you're a child of god read the next verse with all your heart one two give us verse four please quickly one two read one more time so if that day overtakes you what is the sign that you are in darkness is that true the bible says we are the light of the world is that true it says but ye brethren i'm speaking to you of the times and the seasons and i am telling you that it will be in the similitude of the day of noah that day look at it it's in your bible i didn't write this that day will not overtake you as a thief why because the spirit of god is in us there is a salt covenant we are joined he that is joined to christ 
is one spirit. Are we together? You can never serve God when you live in fear of rapture and fear of heaven and fear of hell. Growing up, there used to be a word that the old folks used to use. Assurance of not salvation. Assurance of salvation. Assurance of admission letter. Assurance of job. That's why every time they give you a job, they give you a little paper. It's a token to prove to you that you are there. The Bible says God gave us his spirit as a proof, as a seal of our redemption, as a proof that we are now the begotten of him, that he's no longer the firstborn, um, the only begotten. He's now the first begotten of we, the brethren. Are we together now? So that God is not ashamed. He's not ashamed to call us brethren, but has given us the same spirit whereby we cry, Abba, Father. It doesn't mean people don't backslide. It doesn't mean people don't derail. But I want you to know this. There is a way we have been teaching. I'm showing you the things that have occupied us so that we do not focus on the dominion mandate. 80% of the church is occupied by just preparing themselves for rapture. And I'm not against books. I know that there are books that have been written. There are encounters. Am I boring you? This is a foundation because several of us are living in fear you don't even know what to believe you are afraid you are sitting you are standing and you are wondering and they tell you if god comes and just when you are you know maybe shouting at somebody that's the end of it if he comes to meet you shouting you see that and so we walk in all kinds of fear even when we go before god there is no confidence in approaching him. I believe in repentance. You know me. I always balance things. It's foolishness that makes people to just swing the other side and don't coordinate it. There are spiritual coordinates that guide our dispensing of the truth. When you swing things in either side and they are not regulated by the word, it will still lead to error. I believe in repentance. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There were two men hanging on the cross. Two of them were thieves, true or false. A thief is somebody who stole something and they caught him. Those ones now. Is that true? They were hanging on the cross. And one was quarreling Jesus. Look, Jesus, you are this and nice of you to help us kill these people and let's escape and go and you see, there was no repentance in his heart. The other person turned and said, Ah, this guy is undeserving. We deserve this thing. And Jesus looked at him and said, This day you will be with me in paradise. This day. Why? For believing me. For believing me. For believing my innocence whatever gave you that revelation must be sponsored by the spirit of god because no man can say jesus is lord except by the spirit to say jesus is lord does not mean j-e-s-u-s-i-s-l-o-r-d no that's not it the lordship of jesus is declared by revelation our announcing it is simply a product of it's not the reason no that's why the bible says in acts chapter 10 while they yet, peter yet spake the holy ghost fell on them There are so many things in my spirit. We have to free ourselves. The average Christian that we see walking around does not exactly know what he should do for God. Even what we, when we talk about purpose, most people think purpose is just for graduates. You are a graduate, your purpose is whatever you studied, do something with it, get married, train your children and give some money to the church and God will help you. That is a fruitless life. It truly is a fruitless life. The dominion mandate has been corrupted by an exaggerated fear of hellfire, fear of heaven, fear of rapture. And there are books that keep coming. Every time you go online and just Google it, some of you, oh, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw rapture. It may not be a lie. 
The impact of revelations can cause you to be biased if the Holy Spirit does not balance you. You can be caught up in an event and see the rapture happen and the catastrophe that happened and if God does not give you balance, you can return back to earth and start harassing everybody. Brother, be prepared. I'm late for work. I'm telling you that Jesus is coming and you know, and all, and will make people feel guilty. And pastors, sometimes we are gullible because there are members that bully us. I want to come and teach a series. I had a seven days revelation about rapture. I need to come and teach people. And they come and stand and at the end of that teaching, you wonder whether God is really love. There are those who have seen every pastor in hell listen to my message revelation uh, what was it called reality of heaven and hell there are people who have seen satan found out that this is a very useful tool so those who started having these experiences satan can appear as an angel of light are we learning he now began to open people through experiences it is true that they left it it is true that they were somewhere it is true that they saw tears similitudes and they returned back to destroy people let me tell you something this issue of rapture and heaven and hell has caused more fear and uncertainty to the extent that pastors who love god and have served in the vineyard for years cannot stand today if i say it right now if you know you are going to heaven don't stand up but if i say stand up some of you will just stand up so that you are not embarrassed so that if somebody say we are praying together you mean you don't even know where you are going you are not my friend again but the truth is many people don't know for many people this is our theology let's just keep watching the day the trumpet sounds if i make it glory to be to, be to jesus no so we preoccupy our minds and never do anything are we together we never do anything it has made many fathers irresponsible in the name of being evangelists or missionaries ah i need there's an urgency in my spirit i need to preach the gospel jesus can come you know any day any time honey there is no food that's not the issue let's just pay the price god knows when he comes he will reward us and the wife is saying what are you saying there's no food in the house nothing is happening and at the end of it the man will run and leave them and call the woman a witch call the children he gave birth to the five children witches leave the children to roam around like prostitutes and say i'm going to the mission field and then an unbeliever will meet them and train them and convert them you see what is happening all around islam is the fastest growing religion in europe there has never been any stadium like crusade with any evangelism but you are using an aberration of the dominion mandate occupy structures systems everywhere until i come listen brothers and sisters if we do not get this straight we are going to live very useless lives the most heat of this tragedy is the north northern christians are the most dominion mandate non-compliant you know why because the christianity we received in the north was purely evangelical are we together and which was correct but i'm saying that the imbalance there is that because of the urgency of things like persecution and so on and so forth people now were indoctrinated into not being serious with things like their lives their families it's in the north you can see one man with five six children staying in a small room and he tells you look what is the use of building a house i saw a vision and i know that when jesus comes call me banzane you hear them say it and they they threaten your visionary attitude oh i want to build a house i want to do this all those things are useless when the the motto when the buy the motto yes you also call me banzane and then we say those things they look very nice they look appealing and they are responsible for the pain that many families the pain that many churches the pain and the decadence that happens in the society nobody takes responsibility over anything because we are saying after all jesus is coming the concept of jesus is coming 
is not a concept that should stimulate indiscipline and unseriousness. Jesus is coming to ginger us to occupy that he comes to meet us as a, uh, as a faithful servant. This mistake was adumbrated in Matthew 25. He gave unto one five talent. He gave unto one two. He gave unto the other one. The one with one talent is doing what we are doing. I know he's coming soon. There's no need wasting my time. When will I go and do business with this money? And he buried it. When Jesus came, he was prepared, waiting for his arrival. Whereas the rest were there trying to bring interest for the master. Are we together now? And then when he came, he now said, you, you are a hard man. You have been threatening me. I can't wait to give you this, your coin. Carry this, your nonsense and leave. What did Jesus call him? Wicked one, two. Um, profitable servant and those who spend their time multiplying it listen to what he told them he said well done good and faithful servant one of the synoptic says i appoint to you kingdoms that's the reward are we together jesus is coming soon should never threaten the dominion mandate the consciousness of rapture should never threaten the dominion mandate. The consciousness of hell should never threaten the dominion mandate. The dominion mandate is not an antichrist mandate. Hey, look at me, church. The dominion mandate is not a mandate for ambitious people. Most people preach that the, the dominion mandate is for Pentecostals. So whenever we are talking about advancing the kingdom, they look at great people like our fathers, Bishop Oedeko and the rest, and say these people are just carnal. All they are thinking about is university. Jesus is coming soon. All they are thinking about is empowering people, prosperity all this money money thing and you see bloggers writing in ignorance we made that mistake and now we are about losing almost all our missionary secondary schools because the missionaries that came and other orthodox ministries like catholic equa you know and all of that they built schools is that true they built hospitals that that was a, a mindset of the dominion mandate Adv they permeated lands because of the medical aid they could bring to people so although they did not like their gospel they still gave them land and gave them space today we are losing this and there are no good schools again you cannot trust a school where your child will be trained properly the mission schools no longer have money and support you know why because those to support them said no we are closer to rapture there is no need supporting you let us just wait jesus is coming many of us here are already having that mindset it must change tonight being rapture compliant is not running away from responsibility and sitting down to say oh let me make sure i don't talk no he comes to meet you like that he calls you an unprofitable servant are we blessed we're going to pray i wish i had time we'll, we'll continue next week the gift of righteousness righteousness like kenyon would say um, would define he calls it the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of inferiority and condemnation as i've learned about righteousness i found out is deeper than that revelation is progressive you know that kenyon died long ago are we together if kenyon were still alive he would have upgraded a lot of things righteousness is not just the ability to stand before the father righteousness is the very nature of god god's nature are we together not just doing right God's nature, his rightness before the Father is what was imparted upon us. Listen, there is nobody who is qualified to execute the dominion mandate if you do not carry the righteousness of God. The Bible calls us now the righteousness of God. That's why he calls it a gift. Everybody say it is a gift. Say it again, it's a gift. Now every gift God gives you, you use those gifts to produce fruits. Read the Bible. Gifts go with fruits. Gifts, fruits gift fruit the gift of the spirit the fruit of the spirit the gift of the spirit is god's benevolence to you the fruit of the spirit is a product of your own alignment it is your own participation in the equation there is the gift of righteousness there is the fruit of righteousness the outworkings of righteousness hallelujah listen the first thing any believer needs is 
to possess the gift of righteousness it is only the gift of righteousness that authorizes the holy spirit to come upon you listen you cannot have the holy spirit without the gift of righteousness it's impossible there are progressions the first thing that must happen to a man to be able to reign in life is to be born of a woman you have to be born of a woman that's what authorizes you to wear a body the second thing that must happen to you is rebirth regeneration from the word regime please make sure you're writing this down the first thing that must happen to you is your natural birth everyone born of a woman comes with the nature of the first Adam the fallen nature the nature of the first Adam is the nature that is corrupted is the nature that is called sin sin is not just something you do sin is a nature that comes to every man he said in sin did my mother conceive me the true concept of sin is not the things that are done the true concept of sin is a nature that is inherent in you that compels you to be a slave to it and then execute a lot of things so the first thing that must happen to any man is birth the second is rebirth 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 what is rebirth an impartation of the nature and the image of Christ in that man hallelujah these are realities of redemption that we must know in order to execute the dominion mandate the Bible says this let me tell you what the Bible says we're rounding up give give me please give me first Peter chapter 1 verse 23 I think 22 23 first peter chapter 1 22 23 um, i'm looking for one I'm, I'm sure it's one of those verses first peter being born again being born again everybody listen this born again thing is a big deal being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abided forever being born again or being saved as we call it it's not just some oh god oh god i give you my heart i give you my heart i am your child i am your child amen amen and they say congratulations you are now a child of god take a little hamper a little tape in it and a little biscuit and you are no 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 that, that's not it at all being born again is a supernatural event listen that's why you must make sure everyone around you has that experience it is the condition to fulfill the dominion mandate the Bible says that only those who have received the gift of righteousness and then the abundance of grace shall by that one man that mediator of the new covenant Jesus himself the foundation of our work in the kingdom the foundation of the restructuring for the dominion mandate starts with Jesus the pattern man the portrait Jesus himself the Bible says looking up to him he is the epicenter of this dominion mandate he is the epicenter of the entire life of the believer whenever we talk kingdom whenever we talk of anything the epicenter of what we call the faith life now is jesus you begin to trace your compass from him whenever you draw any bearing outside of the christ that whatever it is that you are constructing is already in error christ is the standard we start with him and we begin to navigate our path through this kingdom life it starts in christ that's why the bible says the first qualification is a regeneration comes from the word regime because every man born of a woman is carrying a spiritual gene of the first adam the fallen nature you do not have to commit any physical sin anyone who is not a possessor of righteousness cannot be in heaven cannot be in heaven the only not exception to this that i've seen from bible are babies why because their wills have not been developed for them to make a choice that's why there are no babies in hell whoever has a vision with babies in hell did not go to hell he went somewhere else are we together now yes
the gift of righteousness do you have that gift it's a gift it's a gift pastor i give you a gift as with any gift it must be received that is a gift you receive it you can receive it this is the foundation i give it to you you receive it i give you can reject it that's what the bible says as many as received him gave he them the power to become to become to become the power to become so when you receive him the power to become is given to you they that are possessors so when you have received christ by faith truly in your heart you can dare to say together with all the saints that i am part of the brethren i have a right to call abba father i have a right to call abba father he is not just your father he is not just the god of joshua selman that's a different dimension he is now our father that's why paul can say about the family in heaven and on earth we are now one big family under the same lord under the same faith under the same baptism paul was teaching there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism we have been immersed into the same experience the foundation please hear me is not impartation impartation cannot give you the gift of righteousness healing cannot give you the gift of righteousness teaching all the principles that i teach you on success and all of that as important as they are they cannot give you the gift of righteousness the gift of righteousness is freely given the custodian the authorized entity that can guarantee its release to you is jesus the christ his office is exclusively responsible for handling eternal life handling the gift of righteousness the holy spirit is only an enforcer he comes with respect in honor to your believing jesus you don't believe the holy spirit and receive the gift of righteousness no you don't believe the father and receive the gift of righteousness the same way it is not the vc signature that is on your admission letter it is the registrar but it's not the highest authority it is his office is that true so the office of the christ is responsible for allocating this when you stand and believe his report that message the reward for believing it is that the christ authorizes the spirit of god to come to you so when you come out for an altar call you don't know how supernatural what it is you are doing you don't feel anything physically you stand and heaven is watching the sun is watching lord jesus i believe in this i believe in that and while you are saying it jesus vets the sincerity of your confession and on grounds of that truth the spirit of god comes into your life representing eternal life and in that instant whether you feel clean or not the bible tells us like joshua the high priest in zechariah that that gift of righteousness is given to you the gift of righteousness is your past is your qualification it opens you up to the potentials of manifesting this dominion mandate the other dimension we'll look at is in subsequent series the abundance of grace abundance on grace another word is grace upon grace because there is saving grace that is a seed given to you as god's benevolence but it does not stop there that grace is nurtured through knowledge and understanding grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace becomes abundant as you access knowledge so in other words there are two things that you must possess the gift of righteousness and access to knowledge access to knowledge that grants you the privilege to be able to reign God is counting on us to fulfill this mandate God is counting on us when that rebirth happens to us as believers what then is the next step the next step after rebirth is discipleship write the word down we have abused that word discipleship discipleship is the way believers are trained 
to reign discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's code of operation discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's belief system discipleship is the system where believers are trained to reign what is happening right now in koinonia is discipleship the word has become so ugly most people don't even want to hear it because for many people discipleship means under some kind of stringent religious system submitting under all sorts of things no we need discipleship it is God's system where ordinary believers are now trained on the matters of the kingdom trained to understand the precepts of, of the kingdom and this is why God gave apostles this is why God gave prophets listen this is why God gave evangelists are you seeing where we now come into the equation we were never there from beginning the apostolic ministry the prophetic ministry as we know it now is not an eternal ministry they are not eternal no Jesus is not in heaven today just as our apostle no when he sat upon that throne we still call him the apostle of our faith but his ministry now number one is lord number two is an as an intercessor the bible says he makes intercession for the saints even if i prophesy the bible says it will end is that true even prophecies will end even tongues will end so a day will come when god will look at us and say pastor alpha come well done good and faithful servant i put you over destiny makers international and you walked with them you did a great job i see the devils that you casted i see the sick bodies you have done well well done enter into the rest there is a new assignment that is going to be given to you a day will come god will look at me and say apostle oh joshua selma he will call me apostle <laughs> whatever he calls me he's right <laughs> hallelujah and then he will congratulate me and say well done for the labor they laughed at you but you continued you served and when they are doing it some of you who laughed at me will be watching that will be such a gallant ceremony this is what will happen in heaven and while that handshake is going on well done good and faithful servant we are smiling in glory and rejoicing we have conquered life we occupied well till he came and he says because of the tv station you people set up we have here in the record in heaven over one billion souls came because of this television ministry ah. surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus you know that song i can only imagine some of you let me tell you what will happen in heaven you will stand you are happy you got there but you will be ashamed i hope you know there's shame in heaven oh yes go and read your bible there is you stand no souls no partnership no blessing you gossiped and said everything the gift of righteousness brought you to heaven well done and there are, you will see men who were slaughtered like animals men who they did all kinds of things you will see them there age 33 standing there happy because 33 is the standard right and you will see them stand and the matthias crown will be put on them all kinds of people and you will stand there no crown no applause because you just said jesus is coming the the old hymn we used to sing only remembered for what we have done remember that hymn yes we must train believers to reign we don't train believers to become our church members pastors you don't train believers so that i can get church members this member consciousness is destroying god's dominion mandate god's idea is not to have a pile of weak people looking at a superhuman human being called apostle joshua selman and every sunday the man of god is here god's idea is that he uses men called gifts to prepare the believers to reign are we together 
the next dimension after reigning is called governance god begins to apportion dimensions apportions mountains spheres of influence that represents his desire and the people you have now trained and are still training are now allowed to begin to occupy these dimensions this is god's idea being a church member for 10 years and not doing anything for god no soul winning no building institutions that advance the agenda of god is a total waste of time that may be religion that may be christianity in court but that's not kingdom hallelujah we're going to pray our time is up i gave this illustration to help you understand that when he said have dominion the idea is not outshining people the idea is understanding that the gift of righteousness alongside the abundance of grace that is supplied on the strength of knowledge access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the systems of god empower you to now begin to occupy occupy does not mean build a house for yourself occupy does not mean buy a jeep listen carefully occupy does not mean um um carry all kinds of Gucci, designers, Louis Vuitton, and all of those things are only the fringe benefits. Are we together? They are to be able to create an ample condition for you to be effective. So you don't rejoice and say, look, I am enjoying. Why? Look at my house. Look at five cars. Look at ten shoes. Look at trips abroad. And you put them like crowns. Whoever talks like that does not know God and does not understand the dominion mandate so my pride and your pride is not in our cars have the cars but that's not the pride the pride is not that you are now wearing a hair of two hundred and fifty thousand. that is useless if it did not help you advance the kingdom your pride is that god gave me money and i walked the systems of the kingdom because I understood I would be a kingdom financier and I used that money I sponsored a TV station that now created a platform for people to receive Jesus for people to rise for people to be built I built a university that was able to empower people they were agents of national transformation at the same time addicts for God I was able to raise a school of ministry that mentored and guided people and they became firebrand apostles and pastors this is kingdom check what you celebrate there are things that are worth celebrating part you at the back but that is not it doesn't make any sense in the spirit i have 10 estates nonsense truly speaking i have 30 shoes nonsense if i don't balance this many of us are on the way to destruction because this is what we call christianity we come and jump around and say my faith is working why i have 30 suits look at my picture with the owner of so 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 and so oil company and you gather them around and live your entire life while you are old you just say you know i lived a successful life that's a wasted life a life of purpose and a life of meaning it's a life that contributes to fulfilling the dominion mandate what is it take charge what is it expose creation to who i am and what i am and i've taught you that the dominion mandate is twofold one establishing christ in the hearts of men you must establish christ in the hearts of men that's why soul winning is non-negotiable please hear me if you are a christian and you are not winning souls god is not happy with your efficiency there is something wrong winning souls is not for preachers winning souls is your contribution to giving more space for people to know him love him and to extend his influence the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor the more and more we find people who love jesus and surrender their hearts to him and the more we can permeate our environment with the ideology we'll talk about that next week of the kingdom we are fulfilling the dominion mandate now that you are born again apostle i don't know what to do return back to the dominion mandate now that you have received the 
the gift of righteousness contend for the abundance of grace how does it come grace and peace comes through knowledge multiplication through knowledge access it takes a long time the bible says you don't just reign with grace that grace must be lavish it must be in abundance that means you must be a bank of knowledge you must be a bank of understanding you must be a compendium of kingdom mysteries and on the strength of those mysteries you reign rise up on your feet We are going to pray three prayer points very quickly tonight. Prayer point number one. Lord, restore me. Listen. Lord, I don't like the way my life has been. I've been living my life. All I think about is food to eat, wife to marry, husband to marry, children to have. Let me just complete my education. And some of you are obsessed about marriage, obsessed about children, as if these things in themselves obsessed about cars oh lord you have to give me a jeep before august and god is saying come on come on come on i'm bigger than that you can't be on earth just for jeeps there is a higher and a nobler call i like you to pray and say lord re realign my life to the dominion mandate realign my life lift your voice and pray inside and outside your gifts are only useful when they are aligned to the dominion mandate and he gave them dominion and he gave them dominion and he gave them dominion dominion over principalities and powers dominion over systems and structures dominion to legislate dominion to administrate hallelujah i'll be teaching you this next week but we can still pray lord this dominion mandate is complex where is my own part show me lift your voice and cry where is my own part we all have roles to play that's what we call our assignments that's what we call purpose are you praying Lord I'm tired of living a useless life I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ show me show me show me reveal to me the blueprint Jesus said lo I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will lo I come in the volume of the book the last prayer point for tonight lord prioritize my life take away distractions keep me focused on the things that really matter the things that have eternal value lift your voice and pray take away distractions take away distractions let me not major on the minors let me not major on the minors Take away distraction from my church. Take away distraction from my fellowship. Take away distraction. I want my life to be focused. 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 As I seek prosperity, as I seek cars, as I seek houses, as I seek influence, Lord, redirect my focus that these things do not be distracted. That I will know they are only a means to an end. The end is fulfilling the dominion mandate. That the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth like the waters the sea. Hallelujah. Let's add one more prayer point. I know our time is gone. I want you to pray and say, Lord, anything that has distracted me and has taken the place of this assignment i pray that you restore restore some of you you are the way you look for money 
the way you you exaggerated it and god is out of money 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 all the way money cars houses children marriage whatever job job lift your voice and say lord i ask in the name of jesus christ cut away cut away attachments ungodly attachments attachment to things attachment to motives attachment to things attachment to motives hallelujah I want to see you I want to see you Let's lift our hands and bless his name. Jesus, we thank you for tonight. It's an honor to be here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just want us to pray two prayer points very quickly hallelujah yesterday the Lord showed me a vision that necessitates us praying before we continue hallelujah I saw a mighty manifestation of the spirit of infirmity I saw like someone blowing something and then it just went around and i saw people falling sick mysteriously mysteriously falling sick and when the lord shows a thing like this it is because there is authority to rebuke it are we together whether you feel healthy or not is not the issue i like us to agree hold your hands together we are going to pray we we'll command and declare that our borders are sanctified in the spirit lift your voice and begin to pray Libra Cato Sata Brandega de Caloca Rush Capronda Zagate Bracato Shipia. We command the spirit of infirmity to give way in the name of Jesus. Cato Jada Baracoto Soto Balada Bala and the Catacata Barato Sata Baria Cato Jebrediska. We bind you, we cast you in the name of jesus we decree and declare as the church of the lord jesus christ that the spirit of infirmity is rebuilt over the body of christ over this territory Zegatekete Shabalaros Embrakato Koto Prakata Paratush Pray Zegate Kotashia Praise the Lord Hallelujah The Bible tells us in the book of Jude how that when archangel michael was carrying the body of moses to heaven satan stood there and there was a contention he was interested in the body of moses because you see no spirit can operate on earth until there is a body that cooperates with it it's not about sickness it's not about infirmity it's a search for bodies it's a search for vessels when jesus was about to rebuke the spirit in the man in gadara all the spirits they said look the only reason why we can function in this territory is because there is a body now at least help us minimize the punishment as you banish us from this body don't banish us from the territory why so that peradventure if that man becomes available we can return i like you to pray i sanctify my body i decree and declare it cannot be an instrument of sickness it cannot be an instrument of infirmity. Lift your voice and pray. Shake it, take it, take it. I speak to my blood. 
I speak to my blood I speak to my bones I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ shake it take it take it hey reke te koto shoto bakata barakoto sode bakata the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body I cause sickness I cause the eaters of flesh and the drinkers of blood I cause the drainers of life my body is sanctified Mato pray I cause spells, I cause enchantments and divinations. Their projections will not find expression in my body. I declare that I am immune, sanctified, immune above divination above necromancy above projections no manipulations with the stars will project sickness to my body pray i challenge sickness i call you by your name and i banish you from my body i call you by your name and i banish you from my family I call you by your name and I banish you from my environment. Pray, make sure you are praying. Shabratika to Zebres. Lakata Praskato Pashia. You have a little child, lay your hands on them. I sanctify you. Sato Soto Bekea. No sickness, no infirmity, no untimely death. In the name of Jesus, my body is a temple. Shekatos Koto Prakata. Embretas Kalapatos. Divinity resides in my body. Matata Kosoto Brendekete Lakataya. hallelujah hallelujah one last prayer point that whosoever digs a pit must fall into it i like you to declare open your mouth and cause the human entities that partner with spirits to project evil over the lives the bodies of men don't keep quiet open your mouth we close the heavens over them we frustrate their counsels in the name of the lord jesus the church of the lord jesus is alive we are not weak we are not beggarly there is an anointing upon us we represent heaven in this territory therefore we decree we decree we define borders we define spiritual borders for the activity of evil thus far have you come no further shall you go we pass a decree we legislate in the spirit in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah before you sit down let me teach you something you see we're teaching on the dominion mandate we'll get there shortly but every time you watch evil loom around your life and you keep quiet and keep silent and hope it will change you have made the biggest mistake are we together evil never never lives by itself are we together 
don't wait until it happens too late from the onset attach it immediately attack it immediately are we together your phone is missing tomorrow your laptop is missing next tomorrow your shoe don't wait already you know you are, you are sensitive close your door blast in tongues for 15 minutes let me tell you something with satan satan experiments he pushes something and then sees your depth of spiritual sensitivity when you are carnally minded you will look for foolish explanations and then he will suspend it for a while so that you don't pray he attacks an issue when he's about to get too much he knows you will pray so he will relax you will remain in that condition then he brings another one before you know it you have been eaten over by darkness whether it is in the middle of a night you turn and it looks like you felt something on your face listen listen let me tell you i won't tell you to do something i'm not doing go and ask the devil you wake up and there is a wicked dream an evil dream you went to sleep after prayer you are in a period of fasting then he mocks you you lie down to sleep and you see someone comes to sleep with you or one kind of nonsense then you just stretch and say no problem no no light or no light worship or no worship charge yourself call the spirit by name listen let me tell you when men sleep things happen in this realm i have told you you lie down to sleep and men make incantations attempting to project your spirit to realms so that they plant things and you return back you wake up with things you did not sleep with are we together we'll pray again one more prayer just one more prayer i like you to pray and say enough is enough whether you know the name of what is happening to you or not blast in tongues the word has come is my season of triumph shake take mysterious disappearances of items mysterious coincidences of bad luck mato soto brigatai pray online pray outside I sanctify my borders. Lekete Kroskubai. I cross the gates of Leviathan. I cross you in the name of Jesus. I lift up the standard of the blood. I invoke the blood. I invoke the blood. Matos Sotos Kadia. I command the elements of creation to stop cooperating with any human agent that uses the elements of the supernatural to project evil to men we curse you we curse you we curse you by the god of heaven hallelujah the bible says resist the devil it didn't say discourse it didn't say hope it didn't say wish james 5 13 says is anyone among you afflicted let him pray that's it that's the requirement is anyone afflicted affliction is not just sickness when things are not happening as the word of God said should be let him pray let him pray all I need is you Lord. is you Lord. all I need is you Oh 
All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. That's why we're here tonight. For all I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Say, na 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 na. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. One more time. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we acknowledge you tonight. We're gathered here tonight, connecting from across several cities and nations. Lord, tonight we have come to learn, we have come to receive of the Spirit. We have come to learn from the fountain of wisdom. Therefore, we pray that the hallowed bread be broken tonight. Grant us illumination and understanding. Grant us impartation capacity to rise to deeper and higher dimensions in the spirit we receive this because we ask and we declare that we will give you the glory in the name of jesus amen god bless you please greet someone and be seated there's a lot to do tonight jesus we bless you hallelujah for as long as we are alive, we will continue to lift up the name of Jesus. We will continue to see that his glory is revealed. One of the things that the advantages of appearing before God every time is that fear dies in your life. Fear is a very wicked spirit. It's a dangerous spirit. Fear has the ability to magnify anything negative. Are we together? When we come before the presence of God, the things that brought fear to you, when you come and watch other men that God has helped, squash them into pieces and trivialize them, then you go back full of faith. Because Satan loves it when he surrounds you with fear and makes it look as if, ah, this is over. This issue in your life and family, there is no hope for it. These are the kinds of platforms where we call the devil a liar. And we don't just say it by calling him. We, we prove the excellency of the victory and authority of the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're discussing the dominion mandate this is part two and um what a joy i consider this topic very 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 instrumental to our understanding and our growth as you know the church of the lord jesus christ has a ministry and one of it is not just to be the light of the earth but to equip believers our assignment as ministers of the gospel is to prepare believers to open them up to all the dimensions and the possibilities that are required to be effective in representing Christ are we together and so we piece together all the dimensions that will be required to grant you access to reign and this for me is one of the the cardinal teachings of the Christian faith the dominion mandate because this encapsulates the will of God right from before the fall of man and he still represents his desire for us today um, we discussed a few things last week we last week was basically an introduction to what I call the original plan it is important for every believer to know and to understand the original plan the average believer has no idea um, as to why we are here what necessitated our being here why the evils um, when you understand the dominion mandate all of a sudden there will be a synergy the happenings around you why the devil seeks to destroy men why the holy spirit was given to us why we must be effective 
without revelation our commitment will be false and they will not be able to last are we together now so we looked at the original plan and it's found in genesis chapter 1 let's look at 26 the bible tells us how that when god was going to make man the prime of his creation genesis 1 and verse 26 and god said let us make man in our own image we discussed two things i said how that number one adam was not the first man created no adam was the first man who introduced our dispensation that is true but adam is not the first human species created the first created in the image and the likeness of god are we together the bible is full of several instances of beings and events that happened that predated adam himself the mere description of the word subdue as part of the the instructions given to adam suggests that there is an enemy an enemy looming somewhere hallelujah and i did tell us that um it's important for us to understand that the ultimate please listen the ultimate for the believer is not just heaven now i know that um evangelically we teach that everything is heaven and we're not necessarily wrong in that sense but the whole idea is not just heaven god's idea is not just to save sinners something happened there was once upon a time where the man god created was not a sinner are we together but there was an instruction given so adam was not on earth just because of sin he was on earth doing something sin came and met him interrupted the plan so I, I gave us an analogy last week how many of us remember how that there was an original plan are we together and that plan is contained in the word dominion a system of legislature and governance in one word dominion is governance an exercise of sovereign control now the the nature of man's dominion must be um it man was not given absolute dominion man was given delegated dominion there is a difference are we together now the an adumbration of man's dominion was revealed by joseph in egypt are we together when joseph was exalted he said you know i have been made a prime minister the prince every other thing was under his control it was only in the issue of ranking that pharaoh who was a representation of the type of the father jesus being joseph being the type of jesus and the egyptian woman he married was the type of the church are we together now so all of those are prophetic events that reveal several things and um, we see how that God gave man authority the Bible says the heaven even the heaven of the heavens has is the Lord's but it says the earth has he given that's a very important thing the earth has he given to the sons of men when man was being given that access to dominion Satan had it are we together satan was somewhere around the earth and he had everything clear and from that time he began to seek for a way to negotiate with man and the only way he could get man to fall was to do get man to do what he did treason rebellion are we together he came through eve and then lured adam and i have taught us again in this place how that adam fell willingly everybody say it adam was not deceived the person who was deceived was eve eve was deceived adam fell because of love he didn't fall because of ignorance are we together and that remains true today there are few men who fall because of ignorance it's easy to deceive ladies it's very difficult to deceive men they fall because of love the second adam also fell because of love jesus was not deceived the father didn't say just come and look at earth and then just close heaven and say i meant to say you should come and die no it was a well calculated thing his wife that eve had now fallen there was a separation so the second adam 
there were many things that parallel jesus and adam he's not just called second adam just because of the nature of sin no are we together now he's called the second adam because he did what adam did and so he looked at his bride and he stripped himself away of his glory and he came to join that bride like adam fell from the glory of god are we together now so redemption is a restoration process redemption was not an initial agenda redemption was a restoration process of course in the infinite wisdom of god a program already had been created like that but experientially speaking right in the garden there was no discussion about apostles and prophets and teachers and koinonia and churches and meetings and all of those no 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 it was about government it was about governance it was about legislature it was about replicating the fullness of the life the glory the character the nature the influence of heaven to be able to find expression across all that territory i hope you know that not every part of earth was like the garden of eden the garden of eden was a type of god's intention because as i'm going to be teaching you it is how god advances so he creates a prototype of his intention plants a man there and gives that man capacity to extend that influence so adam's assignment among other things was to be able to piece together the resources that made eden eden and start extending eden and there were two major ways he would do that one by creativity the other by reproduction take note we are going to deal with this we are discussing very deep kingdom issues now reproduction creativity all other dispensations did not know that there was a possibility of reproduction by a man meeting with a woman producing seed it was always creation not reproduction it was our dispensation that introduced another dimension the only way things were extended in dispensations before us was creativity so if you wanted something it was purely a product of invention but now god revealed a dimension of himself you see marriage has nothing to do with a man and a woman marriage is a dimension in god he only brought the woman out of a man so that they will be actors on earth the primary purpose of marriage is not just children the primary purpose of marriage is to reveal something about god then children come as an advantage so when you lose the prophetic implication of marriage the physical activities are just a waste that's why satan likes gay marriage it's not about a man and a man a woman and a woman it's about corrupting a program are we together now yes so when a man likes a man or a woman likes a woman it's not just inordinate desires that's that's not the issue the is is that men are actors on earth and satan is rewriting another script to describe something bad about god because he dwells in light there is no darkness so he brings a man and a woman these are the only actors who can best describe that mystery called marriage so satan is switching scenes and bringing a man and a man and a woman and a woman the realm of the spirit understand the message that is being sent are we together reproduction reproduction I'll be teaching you different dimensions of dominion later on and you find out that authority exercising authority is just one out of the many ways are we together yes there are many facets authority exercising authority is one of them by speaking passing decrees number two the ministry of prayer especially intercession is another system of dominion number three reproduction you are not manifesting dominion if there is no reproduction hallelujah so the fall of man was a veering off of the original plan for many of us the foundation of our christian journey just starts with the cross or the coming of jesus it looks very spiritual but is wrong the foundation must start right from the beginning are we together i taught you something in theology that we call the law of first use or the law of first mention 
that means that when you want to examine the character of a word or the the usage of a context you have to search for where it was first mentioned study the context of his usage and that's what you use as a compass are we together now so if you want to know the purpose of man we must go back to the book of beginnings genesis are we together now and then see what god said about that man you don't search around for scriptures on prosperity and wealth and then find out where man just appeared in the scene you must go down from the beginning and god said when man appeared he never had any sound on earth the first sound his ears will hear was the speaking of his creator be fruitful multiply etc etc and all of that so it's important that we look at that and study it very importantly the fall of man led to the necessity of redemption jesus himself coming the entire program of redemption was a restoration program not a restoration to heaven not a restoration to heaven please listen carefully not a restoration to heaven a restoration back to god's original agenda even heaven itself as we know is a subset of that agenda revelation tells us clearly i told you the bible finishes with the beginning of a new dispensation am i against heaven no am i against the reality of the fact that saints will be caught up to the heavens no not at all the bible acknowledges that but then it does not stop at us being in heaven we are returning back again right to the earth so it is important that we understand um god's system this series has three main areas we're dealing with the second today the first is what i call the original plan helping you giving you an exegesis of the beginning to understand that god's original idea was not just for us to have cars and houses go to school get married have children train them the way an average believer and well-meaning believer the way an average believer is trained is not makes him or her not to be productive let me tell you something it matters how you are trained and it matters who trains you are we together let me repeat myself it matters how you are trained and it matters who trains you the person who introduced jesus to you did something to you very serious it was more than a message the person who has introduced the faith life and the spirit life to you may have communicated his or her limitations it matters what you are told about satan it matters what you are told about demons it matters what you are told about the holy spirit are we together it matters what you are told about purpose and destiny it matters it's not enough to just have information it is important to study the communicators of those informations because this is where error and limitation came from so we have sincere people who are well-meaning but they have not paid the price to take advantage of the ministry of the holy spirit and the word to study comprehensively the program of god unfortunately our bible colleges our schools of ministry do not do so much justice in opening people to god's blueprint so the entire scope of the average believers understanding of what we call our pilgrimage the journey is this i am born one day i receive an evangelical message and then i'm told to give my soul to someone i cannot see and then i hand over that soul to him and then in in return i hear that he gives me a life whatever that is i just know i have it and then i'm also told that my name is in the book of life meaning i've escaped hell hallelujah glory to god what else do i do i'm encouraged to be a worker in church then i'm 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 encouraged to get a wife or a husband that is like me then two of us are encouraged to make sure we have children are we together then we are encouraged to make sure we train those children as a sign of responsibility then we are told to just live our lives giving glory to god regardless of what happens and then we are told to prepare for death that is that is that is another writer script that is not god the word of god that liveth and abideth forever is very clear as to god's intention so most believers are largely confused 
you were in secondary school and they told you just keep moving university just finish up you came from the world into the university from university they say now that you are going into the world and you know all kinds of sympathy happens and then you now enter into the world and people say get a job and you get a job and then get a wife or get a husband have children and then try to have cars depending on your level of carnality if you want to if you, you are broke and nothing happens just manage it and all sorts of 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 teachings that look like they are nice then one day you find out that you are sick you don't know why you are sick and then you go to a man of god who says you are healed and you don't even know why you were healed why is god interested in healing men why is satan interested in afflicting people then you find out that a dear lady gets married listen i'm giving your work your faith work meaning and then the lady is barren and she goes to the doctor doctor i've been a nice lady i didn't live a wayward life what is happening and the doctor says that's what i'm trying to figure out i was trained to study just give me time and the doctor is confused cannot find out what is wrong and the innocent lady lives in pain and her whole ambition is oh god give me a child or give me children Think how confused we are on earth. Everybody is trying to suggest to someone how they feel their lives can be better. So someone says, look, if you don't have money, your life will be bad. And then the other person says, so this is what, you know, I've been looking at. Okay, let me try to get the money. Then you become a millionaire and you are happy and you find out that that realm has another trouble you cannot even explain. Are we together? And this is how we live. We receive advices from confused people who confuse others we mentor our children they grow in that confusion and the earth is just a cycle of failure it is important that among the the curriculum that we are given we must be able to give meaning to our lives that's why people commit suicide why not just because they are frustrated their frustration only amplified the meaninglessness of living that's why people do all kinds of stupid things with their lives abuse the word abuse means abnormal use you will misuse everything god gave you if you do not know why it was given are we together yes when you carry 10 bottles of alcohol with the writings written boldly that it destroys you you are not pouring it on the ground you are transferring it into your body it's called abuse an abnormal use why because you do not know that that body was a loan like you collect a loan from a bank if you collect a loan from a bank and you misuse it you are already signing in for disaster so we abuse our bodies when god gives you a wife and you don't know why a wife came they ask you why are you married you say well i just found out that i was age was not on my side and they said i should find somebody it so happens that this is the scapegoat who i now call and you abuse that innocent woman are we together or vice versa there are women who abuse men you now find out that god gave you a calm person who says sorry for everything and now he happens to be the victim of your emotional confusion your the the the, the confusion that surrounds your trying to define your life and you vent it on your spouse and where both of you are bold enough to confront one another the children become the victims it is still an extension of confusion when people celebrate golden jubilee they celebrate it angry wondering what they've been doing for 50 years oftentimes most of them are not healthy they can't hear well they can't see well they made costly mistakes in their youthful days that they are paying the price now they didn't have access to the mysteries of the kingdom they've destroyed their lives they are poor they are broke their lives are meaningless it's alarming the rate of suicide right now it used to be in the west you know the developed nations and now even in africa you get up you don't find your child you just see a letter farewell and you see someone on a tree now if we don't do something about this let me tell you right now counseling is big business psychology psychologists are getting a lot of um um business now because there, there are all kinds of trauma centers not just from plane crash so a human being can be alive and just enter a trauma center and say look i need help why i don't know what i'm doing i'm seeing things i'm hearing voices my life is confused we need to return back to god's blueprint otherwise we are going to live absolutely useless lives 
when you understand the dominion mandate then marriage becomes useful children become useful prosperity becomes useful education becomes useful are we together when you understand the dominion mandate it will make sense to you every requirement the bible gives so we cut away from god's original agenda and then we keep telling people don't use don't live a useless life live a life of meaning and the person say what is a life of meaning get a job get a job and the person says, okay he gets a job and fights all over his office till he retires aren't you seen the way our lives are it's a circle think very carefully when you were 10 years 12 years just in with your little friend or your little brother or sister about the confusion in life now look at you are getting to 40 you have joined that vicious circle of confusion even as preachers so many preachers do not know why god gave them a church god just called me and said raise me a people a people of power a people of holiness a people of grace a people of prosperity and we put that that team on our churches our members come and they don't exactly understand what we're saying someone gives a testimony oh god gave me a breakthrough we clap but to what end god made me a minister god increased the dimension of his grace then pastors chase after anointing and you ask them why and they say my church is not growing my life i can't i can't live like this no bread on my table i need to access power i need value so they access the anointing like escapism from poverty then when they become a little anointed they are now happy doors of ministry are opening and then honorariums are coming and all of that and then with that that's how people live i want you to refuse to live a meaningless life are we together you must insist somebody now is about to get married tomorrow in this confusion he's confused he's holding the hands of another confused person and then they are starting something they don't even know where he's going will they dance yes will they eat yes will they be happy eventually no no this is not about demons god's original agenda is the key to joy and happiness not money not education ask those who have these things rich people hang themselves and drop their money and will it to a cat why because i have five useless boys in my house give this cat my inheritance our world is gradually demonstrating that disobedience to god is costly so we must return back to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see There are many of us today our parents are angry with us why because they want you to follow the path they followed and the word of god is already telling you that ah they like the way their lives are and they they do not believe that something they are doing is why their life is like that they tell you just follow don't please don't embarrass us just let it be like that oh i want to get married to who yeah, the brother he's starting up mm, don't do that you see if you do this we are going to beg are you not seeing the way our lives are and then people control people and we are victims of men's thinking there's a lot of gap let me tell you something you need to re-examine the concept of age this thing called age the most excellent part of age is the wisdom attached to it if age fails to come with wisdom it is useless did you hear what i said yes 
that a man i'm not you know we have i have i have so much respect for elderly people you're elderly here i honor you with all my heart but i'm teach. we need to redefine our philosophy of i am old and i am young because there are many old people that are responsible for the pain of people on earth age gives you access it should give you wisdom only age does not just add wisdom on its own at best it can give you sophia human knowledge the fact that you made a mistake does not mean you have found the answer so you can tell us in 1961 i made a mistake did you find the answer you may still be in that ignorant at that point you are just familiar with the problem not the solution how many old people mentor young people you are about to marry and oh no problem i remember i married in 1941 that asked that man's wife whether she enjoyed marriage see her an old woman she would tell you i only enjoyed marriage for three weeks in 40 years that's the person mentoring two people and he said listen to me no i won't listen to you no sir i will respect you but i reject that kind of life you will not define that template for me Do you know why God is called the ancient of days? You know why? The, he is called the ancient of days because of one word, wisdom. Take away wisdom because Satan too is an ancient of days. He's old. The Bible tells us Satan is old. What is the difference between him? At least they are old enough. I think any man that is older than 6,000 years is old satan is not six thousand years old before six thousand years he was already called that old serpent yet he's as foolish and stupid as whatever because it is only a fool that says in his heart there is no god and the bible says even the demons they 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 try to ignore it so they deceive men into believing there is no god get your life into your hands and trust god to use the word of god as a compass and redefine your life because there are many of you looking at me right now we are doing what we call jack of all trades master of none this is how they taught me to live oh this is how i will live i have my little job with nmpc another person has a job with one uh, one para paramilitary and then we are on our way going we don't know the purpose of children so we abuse them people give birth anyhow and make the children liabilities to men and society you just come and somebody passes a child to you and say take care of my child i see i see the person was part of the arrival of the child why because the people doing that do not know the revelation behind abba abba father if before you source a thing you must be ready to sustain it this is what should govern getting pregnant no time do we have the resources the wisdom the grace the capacity for a child if a poor man gives birth to seven children he's a foolish man correct not just because he wants to demonstrate that he can give birth he is abba source you must sustain so you leave those children and they become armed robbers remember i told you satan is looking for bodies and because those bodies cannot be handed over to god satan will find available bodies and they plague our society today kill people rape women and children maim people destroy the peace of society we have violated the dominion mandate and this is why this teaching is very necessary are we together revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 The original plan was what i discussed i spoke to us extensively about the fall of man and i spoke to us about how that redemption was a remedy system now that you are born again you must be able to have a redirection back to god's original agenda and i said a few things to us i said how that there are certain conditions that are required number one is your natural birth for you to be able to stand and execute the dominion mandate one is your natural birth you must be birth born of a woman because when jesus came he came to redeem all those who were descendants of adam listen let me teach you something everybody look up hmm. the blood of jesus 
is only applicable for descendants from Adam if you were not part of that dispensation the work of grace and the cross is not relevant to you otherwise Satan and demons should also be forgiven because a statement was made on the cross it is finished what is the it everything that had grieved the heart of the father the legal claims of justice had been appeased the bible says he shall see the travail of his soul isaiah saw and he shall be satisfied so if he says it is finished that means the demons that neglected their original estates that are now in everlasting chains alongside satan i've told you satan is not the most wicked of the spirit no he's not the belief that satan is the most wicked of all the spirits the king of all the spirits is is not necessarily error it's just a limiting knowledge because satan is not bound in everlasting chains there are spirits more wicked than him that are bound in everlasting chains the bible says that they were bound even for the sake of the elect are we together I pray that God will give us wisdom. You see how peaceful your life will be? This is what Satan does not want us to know. Man of God, listen. This is what Satan does not want your congregation to know. Because if you don't know this story, you won't see the necessity of your victory and you will not know that you have been restored to now begin to walk in dominion. And demons will play games with your life. They will play games with your destiny. You will live your life under the mercy of situations and circumstances. so your natural birth then your spiritual birth or what i call a rebirth the bible calls it a regening regeneration regime every possessor of adam's genes born of a woman is born in iniquity are we together now born in iniquity means that legally you are under the influence of satan the prince of the power of the air as wrong as well as the elements in this system and you cannot carry out the dominion mandate with the genes of adam so there is a regening a regeneration are we together now when jesus christ comes into your heart a real miracle happens there the bible tells us there is a translation the bible says he that is joined to christ is what help me one spirit one spirit not two spirits one spirit so christ comes to live in you he creates his throne in your heart tabernacles in you in the person of the holy spirit now watch this the moment that happens you are now ready not to dominate you are not ready to dominate you are ready to now begin the process that restores you back to god's original agenda the dominion mandate now this is where many believers miss it and pastors ah, pastors if you do not understand the difference between prophecy and experience you will mislead people the speakings of the bible are twofold the prophetic communications of god are we together now and the experience of that communication when god speaks from his perspective it is done because god has no past no present no future he's called alpha omega time is not something that god is limited by he's not even limited by eternity eternity is still a subset of him if he dwells in eternity then somebody created it correct are you getting blessed tonight and so you must understand that this god that we are talking about is not limited you must understand his systems and how he works when god speaks he can say sam when you enter that house and by the time your fifth child comes you see that and sam can say i'm not even married that's the speaking of god god will never say when you marry uh -uh. he talks to men as if he's talking to himself this is how, this is why many people do not know god can look at you and say promise take care of these 30 children whereas he doesn't have a job that's god because in his word 
is also the grace to convert that prophecy to experience so he will not speak to you like he's speaking to a man let me tell you one way to know that a word came from god is that there will be no resources at that point to make it come to pass whether spiritually financially etc if god speaks to you and you have the resource to do it you had your brain or a demon noah build me an ark two stadium two stadium of i mean the ark of noah was stadiums two like that are made of gopher wood how many years plantation agriculturist will give you that noah spent 120 years building that how many years 120 years but the way god spoke it it was as if rain will come next week this is a mistake many people make god can say i have sent you today this is how god speaks because your whole lifetime is still his today so god says today i have anointed you as a prophet to the nations then you get up with lack of understanding the systems of god and now ordain yourself and try to get visa to ghana or smuggle your way to uk and you die somewhere in the forest and it there will be is it a lie no god spoke to you but you did not understand the difference between prophecy and experience it was paul who was teaching the church in hebrew and began to teach them in chapter 2 and told them he says now god did not leave anything under the feet of man are we together now he was trying to quote um, the the psalm of david right what is man that thou art mindful of and then he says but now that's experience in god's eye and in god's mind nobody should be sick in god's eye and in god's mind there should not be one sinner on earth because right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain go to the prison is there a thief there please answer me is there a thief that went into the prison today yes so does that mean that the efficacy of the word is not working no it is he already said it is finished and they are still criminals it is finished there are still barren people god will look at someone on a wheelchair and still say it is finished yet he's still there the day that the anointing and the faith of that person comes he enters into the experience of that word that's why god is resting but he says there remaineth a rest not for god for his people what is that rest the experience of his finished work so we keep moving around with ignorance and making a fool out of ourselves and demons are happy and hope we continue like that and then at the end of it the equation does not add up and then we are frustrated and humiliated is god helping us tonight tonight we are going to look at the second aspect and that is discipleship the dominion mandate has three segments number one is a revelation of the original plan the fall of man and the restoration through jesus that's the first the second is discipleship what is discipleship a system of training for reigning a system of reprogramming a system of recalibration into the image and the likeness and then next week we are going to look at the third segment governance so these three segments number one the original plan the fall of man and the restoration process that we call redemption the second is discipleship discipleship is not some some doctrinal curriculum of people no it is the way people are trained to carry out the dominion mandate listen nobody reigns just because you have received jesus remember the scripture that i gave you last week right that they that received two things number one the gift of righteousness number two the abundance of grace so two requirements to reign one you must receive what the gift of righteousness no man can walk it is god's very nature imputed through faith when you believed in the finished work of his son his death the burial the resurrection and 
the glorification not just the resurrection jesus did not just ascend and is hanging in the sky he is seated it matters because efficient starts with the revelation of his seated position so it's not just the death i know great men like kenyon and all of that talk about the death burial resurrection but it's more than that the death the burial the resurrection and the glorification that coronation was what david saw the lord said to my lord the lord the ancient of days said to my lord the christ sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool hallelujah discipleship why why discipleship let me tell you something because you see when you receive jesus christ everybody listen carefully when you receive jesus christ automatically it gives you access the life of god is in you give us genesis chapter 1 please verse 26 god created man there was a twofold design and this design this configuration must be gotten back for man to be able to walk in dominion number one is what his image the first purpose of discipleship is to carve in you the experience of the image of the christ the spiritual dimension the spiritual composition are we together now paul said this he says my little children in whom i travail until christ be formed in you the formation of christ in reality the indwelling of the word is a reflection of his image because the bible says let us make man in our own image and the bible says christ who is the word is the express image of the godhead he that has seen me has seen the father are we together now philip said show us the father and then it's sufficient he said philip have you been so long with me philip and yet you have not seen the father whoever has seen me has seen the father so christ came as the image so man must first be made in christ now listen let us make process let us make process the moment that life of god comes the making is not automatic the life is there the spirit of god is at work in you if it were automatic then you do not need the word and you do not need the, the ministry of the holy spirit the formation of christ now please everybody listen this is one of the indices for spiritual growth the moment believers get born again if you have ever wondered what next let me tell you what next is the spiritual development of those people so that the life the character and the traits of christ will be fashioned in them are we together now the image so pastors apostles prophets evangelists together that five-fold ministry they work harmoniously to help people achieve this are we together the image of christ being formed in you that's what you call character that's what you call the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the recreated human spirit when you read galatians chapter 5 verse 16 paul was teaching the galatian church and he said this i say then please give it to us galatians 5 and verse 16 we'll read 16 then we'll go down to 22 he says this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh so the key is what walking in the spirit you must be trained to walk in the spirit the bible says to set your minds on the things above and not on the things of the earth it takes a training the name of that training is discipleship discipleship is not just an indoctrination into a church's curriculum and beliefs are we together because many of us hate the word and i understand because it has been used religiously by people who are not even born again discipleship is how people are made to reign verse 22 it says but the fruit of the spirit there are all kinds of theological understandings but the fruit of the spirit is love listen joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness 
temperance he said against such there is no law meaning that it is impossible to be a violator with these conditions this is the atmosphere of the spirit the fruit of the spirit combined creates an atmosphere that becomes formidable no power and force of hell can penetrate that all these things you call the fruit of the spirit are and they are ingredients that structure something the bible says that we are built into a spiritual house like living stones one block upon the other you are adding love joy peace patience gentleness let me tell you every attack on a believer's life comes when there is a lapse in one of these are you hearing what i'm saying listen are, are we learning am i am i blessing you every attack on your life will come based on an advantage that was taken as a result of the absence or the deficiency of this from where comet um how does the bible put it quarreling and all this among you you see that when there is no love there will be jealousy when there is no love there will be bitterness when there is no joy the bible says for with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation is that true it says the joy of the lord is your strength when your spirit is weak there is no joy joy is not laughter joy can only be given by the spirit unbelievers have happiness only believers can have joy is of the holy ghost joy has nothing to do with circumstances it is a state of being that is based on a revelation and the presence of the holy ghost count it all joy my brethren when you go through die how can you rejoice knowing this knowing this this is the secret of the joy knowing this without knowing it you cannot have joy so when you are going through diverse situations you lost a loved one you lost a job something is not working well ordinarily you should be sad but knowing this there is a revelation that the trying of your faith work at patience and then that let patience have her full course then it will make you mature it will make you unfruitful knowing this hallelujah are we blessed we must build the fruit of the spirit in people you can be educated as educated as anything and lack gentleness goodness meekness and never be promoted correct you went to school but you are not gentle at all the company throws you away because you lack the fruit of the spirit do you know all the the commandments of nigeria are a human attempt to get men to have the fruit of the spirit so when they tell you pay a bill of hundred thousand naira and all of this is their own way of trying to force you to feel the pain of stealing somebody's thing it is their way of trying to give you love when they jail you because of impatience they are trying to get you to be what to have long suffering because you are not patient that's why you wanted one million in one day and you jump somebody's fence or you stopped a luxurious bus let me tell you the chaos in our society is because there is the absence of the image the charisma, the image of christ every law when you whip your child it is because he violated something that is here when a husband beats a wife something is missing peace sister when a brother comes to say i want to marry i want to marry you do you know why you don't say yes immediately you go back and start cross-checking you don't even know this is what you are cross-checking does this guy love me it's not just love god alone does he have joy this brother is an angry brother peace i watched what he did to somebody one day long suffering this guy looks like a hustler he puts his hand in everything is he gentle no the way he approached me was bad is he good no he's greedy does he have faith he come you know and all of that and when you calculate all those things the other side of the equation creates your response and you go back and say no now you may not know that this is what you were checking when someone is advising you he's helping you society can never go into decadence when the image of christ is enforced 
the image of Christ is the unifier whether you are from Kogi state plateau state listen to me whether you are Yoruba or Igbo all those disparity in culture that is as a result of bad habits can be neutralized if the image of Christ is formed in believers so when you see someone who is Hausa and someone who is um, Igbo or someone who is Yoruba or someone who is from the south south four of them you will not see any noticeable differences why because they have allowed the genes of Adam that was a part of the course that came through their earth and programmed something oh the men from this place are stupid the men from this place are irresponsible when you allow the character are we learning the dominion mandate it says man was made in the image it was not possible for Adam to hate it was not possible for him to be impatient how did man fall because there was a pastor that said something Satan became that preacher that's why when God came he said who told you not who showed you a voice reprogrammed you so how will men return back to this a voice will reprogram men the spirit of God is in his words as you are hearing this something is happening to you you are now seeing that this is not the issue of marry from here or from here this is not the issue of I am from Bielsa I am from South South in our place this is how we do it all those our place when you talk like that let me show you whose descendant you are on earth there are two families one those who are connected to Adam and everything Adam came with two those who have been regined 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 into another family so you cannot look at me and say you come from so so place your people are drunkards i don't know who they are i've been called out of every tribe genesis please give us revelations 5 verse 9 i want you to read it god has to deliver us verse 9 1 2 no gen um revelations 5 media 5 verse 9 revelations revelations let's read it one okay verse 9 5 verse 9 thank you okay read it one to go and they sung a new song uh -huh, saying thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed me unto God how by your blood out of Kogi plateau state emo Enugu out of the irresponsibility that comes with the men in that place out of the pride out of the selfishness out of the hatred the bitterness he has redeemed I've been called I sympathize with my people but I'm not part of that tragedy I am another tribe I've been carved out listen if you don't believe this thing you are not a Christian it's not just that it's bad you are not a christian at all what else do you believe we have been called that's why in koinonia here you don't see anybody do anything which tribe i don't even want to know where you are coming from i know that there are two families the ones on earth and the ones in heaven were all related the blood the veil torn a family no we no man after the flesh oh your father is this i'm not saying don't be sympathetic to people in your area or whatever jesus started preaching from the jews but some of this carnality this tribalism and this these garbages we bring there is a thief in every tribe there is a fool in every tribe there is a devil in every tribe every tribe has witches and wizards there are poor people in every tribe so it's just that you know we make it look just because you saw more northerners looking stupid you come up with a theology that there are all more evil people and say every evil person is it's just money monger is a lie there are people who have exempted themselves called out not everybody is a money monger not every lady is a materialistic person just looking for a millionaire it's a lie not everybody is an irresponsible person not knowing where he will go some people have seen the end they have seen you know what i'm doing to you is a reprogramming this is discipleship i am unifying you now it is on the strength of this you can call somebody brother and sister that issue of brother and sister for many people is carnal 
is just carnal because you were told to say it brother um, alpha brother femi and the rest but when men like kenneth e hagen rw shambach when they use those names it was out of this revelation i do not know you in the flesh but if you are in christ we are brothers you are welcome they extend the right hand of fellowship everybody say the image we need the restoration of that image there are many people who are not spiritual live likeness we're coming there we must teach you how to be like christ be like christ be like christ that's the image the image talks of being the likeness talks of doing the image talks of being being who you are not what you do let's go back to genesis please give us verse 28 we'll discuss more 28 um next next week 1 verse 28 genesis now everybody i want you to observe something and god blessed them and said listen carefully be fruitful he never talked of having anything you be it first then later on he now said have dominion so god's focus when he's beginning to work with man is in being first before having we have reversed it somebody gets born again today and we say you must have you must have a car you must have a house which is he he's having something he has not become he's trying to have the likeness no image so one million naira comes he has but he has not become so it will destroy him are you saying that now yes have a wife but he has not become a husband so it destroys him the primary strategy and pattern god's kingdom pattern for discipling people and nation is to focus on their being before they are having listen those who write programs for foundational classes in churches must subscribe to this otherwise you are going to produce a powerless carnal many times devilish believers that's why there are witches and wizards in church because we are passionate about having so if i am born again and in two weeks i come with a flashy shoe flashy cloth i'm showing you how much i help me preach back to me i'm showing you how much i on the strength of that you will say i have faith and the brother who has just one trouser but the gift of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is working in him we look at him and we say no this one you don't have so because you don't have the word is not working our focus is on having spiritual men rank and rate people first by being so i can look at you and all you have is one trouser one bible but i see christ formed in you you are on your way fulfilling the dominion mandate i know that this guy will soon be a principality listen believers let me preach to you stop focusing on having focus on being first the image comes before the likeness it's god speaking to us this is a message to someone already because our society is full of falsehood men and women who are obsessed in having having why because we want to prove we live in a carnal world that only interprets and rates you based on what they can relate with none of these fruits of the spirit is something that is tangible in itself their manifestation can be tangible as you relax you relate with people and environment but you cannot know so i look at this brother and what he has is peace what he has is joy and i think those things are cheaper than money so the brother would rather kill the agenda to being and then focus on having when god begins to deal with a man you find out that the curriculum he gives you has nothing to do with things like teaching of prosperity it's going to be prayer first you are filled with the holy ghost are we together and then you begin to teach he's drumming on you issues of character holiness morality you have to greet people you move around and think i am from this i am a 
yo-yo guy and he says look drop all that thing oh i am the nobody talks to me i was a capon in this and god says that's that's your business and when you want to mess up he tells you listen nebuchadnezzar was not what he had he had money he had power so he could run his mouth and talk nonsense and then he was made to become a beast for how many years seven years a beast with the brain of a man the moment nebuchadnezzar recovered he became a preacher read your bible never empower people who have not become it's dangerous it's a lesson many of us will have to learn that you are a millionaire does not mean you carry a small child who has not become and give him money that's why i like Igbo people when they are doing business they bring in an apprentice no matter how rich that man is there is a limit to the exposure of that child is that true he now begins to do business and they study him one day they will leave money in the drawer five hundred thousand and throw some small things scattered and then the man will go out he will come back and find out that one thousand was missing and he will keep quiet that boy has not become the day he ever says settle me the man will say i will slap you. if you ever talk of settling you have not become you want to have you have not learned integrity you have not learned character you have not learned submission no hmm. is god teaching us being have you become an expression many of us today i can show you that the reality of god's image has not been found formed in you because that anger is still there you've been born again for five years you pray in tongues more than everybody but let somebody just say something small your name is sam and somebody just said uh, john uh, sorry what's the name you don't know my name look i i i know who i am if you do this is you think it's a sign that you are spiritual no no i can look at your life and rank you spiritually in a moment i don't have to see a vision away with your cars away with all the money and the checks and all the prestige and the english and etc all those things could not having i look at your life when i look at your life i'm searching for the christ the word of god already painted a picture and then he says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus then the bible says he had something and was something but he gave them up and became 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 not possessed the possession happened when he became therefore god had so highly exalted him and given notice that people first became before they had the secular system reverses it packaging and falsehood is trying to portray something you are not so i borrow a shoe i borrow a suit i borrow watch are we together i borrow makeup i borrow hair i borrow anything what am i trying to do it's not that I, I i'm trying to show you i'm not cheap bottom line correct whether i'm cheap or not is is, is my own issue but i want you to know i am so conscious of what your perception about me that i don't mind faking everything around it but someone can sit down with gary and say no problem i'm not ashamed this is where i am now i will take it with honor and dignity if i don't look if i look cheap to you like that no problem i agree with the process but i am becoming next time somebody looks at you and tries to make you feel like you are a useless person you you cannot do this and that no problem you are becoming you are becoming line upon line this is what is happening to you in koinonia many of you do not know what is happening to you god has already given you a vision you will be a great prophet a great apostle but you are saying oh god nobody has seen me god says sit down you are becoming you want to have access to the mic you want to have access to a church your body is itching you to have access to lead a program and god says sit down you first become before you have is god speaking to us hmm. discipleship leaders learn to discern people who have become before you give them access don't give people access as a general thing if there are four people three people you now say oh 
you have given you too much access let me share it with this no in the kingdom distribution is be, be as a result of a careful study i have discerned you can fake all those things and act like it but the truth is that if you are not it will show he said by their fruits not by their gifts by their how do you know them by their a gift is dash a fruit is a sign of maturity so someone insults you and says a mecca do you know that when you were entering the university i already had phd and that thing stinks you and you're like i'm a doctor or don't talk and the old man adam adam wants to resurrect with his foolishness and all of a sudden that regening has been crystallized and you laugh and say god bless you ah, ah. and he says is it the america that i know that used to beat everybody i heard of a regening let me tell you if you claim you are born again and there is no evidence of transformation you need help you need counseling you need a retreat praise the lord there are so many there are angry pastors they are wicked pastors they are angry people they are all kinds of arrogant people my name is so 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 and so and so do you know the one you we, we are looking at you and we are still seeing your culture if i still look at you and see your village then you are trying to say that calling out of tribe and nation has gone it's not it's not yet real discipleship training for reigning bringing you into the culture of the kingdom their way of life this is how we live in the kingdom we live through the law of love we live through the law of joy we are peaceful people in the kingdom ah my temper will kill somebody oh somebody hold me you are you are acting the moment you are acting like your village the old man is attempting to resurrect you must keep it dead we do these things and usually there are also other carnal people like us who hail us you know that hailing thing can be so demonic if we are not careful <clears throat> remember they hailed jesus and they said hail king of the jews a few weeks later on the same people said crucify him say you say yes you are looking at me crucify him let his blood be on our head we have to be careful there is one who deserves to be lifted and held forever our job is to confirm into that image here we stand david damson and lift our hands and we will hail yahweh hail yahweh here we stand and lift our voices Together we hail Yahweh, hail Yahweh, we will hail Yahweh, hail Yahweh, we will hail Yahweh, hail Yahweh, hail Yahweh. pastor your first assignment to believers is to make them spiritual the first assignment of a man of god to believers is to extract carnality carnality means a way of living they must be aware of the divine life the divine nature the presence of the holy spirit you turn people to become spiritual the life of god is in me I'm not ordinary i was born by an ordinary man an ordinary woman from social state but now i am a possessor of god's life literally not just some christian gimmicks no i believe it it's a fact it's true how many believers are aware of that divine nature in them it tells the way we respond the bible says he that cometh from above is above all he that cometh from above he that cometh from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly i come from above born of god whatsoever is born of god overcome it overcome it overcome it challenges are not unusual defeat is what is unusual 
whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcomes even our faith but as many as believed him even to them that believed upon his name gave them power to become power to become power to become power to become they looked at Paul ah, ah. Paul who used to kill people Saul that would collect a letter and go and slaughter people what happened spirituality listen this is not an issue of being charismatic if you don't train your people to be supernatural to approach life and approach things with the consciousness of the divine life the consciousness of divinity there are great men of God all around the world who have spent their lives and spent the years of their lives bringing the church into a consciousness reprogramming and recalibrating our mind that the believer in partnership with the Holy Spirit is invincible we must restore these teachings there are many carnal believers on earth in a bit to balance in a bit to teach we have made people carnal helpless no matter what happens they say oh well things just happen like this You are in every way divine that's why we don't walk in signs and wonders how do you stand and stretch your hands to somebody and expect a transference how do you do that how do you stand and speak there is no wire tied to you to someone outside because carnally speaking i can only see with my optical eyes but when you step back and and walk in the realm of the spirit then you know that the vistas of the spirit are not 2020 infinity infinity left only to your faith so i can stand here and see someone in overflow three and speak and expect the power of god to touch that person why i wasn't born this way it's called spirituality there's too much carnality that's why when you tell people god will bless you they still want you to they want to reduce themselves and many pastors this is the limitation of exaggeration on education when you think that because i'm educated i have a master's in this i have a phd in that now there are very educated people in this place but when people trust their education and then you see them castigate spiritual things anything that does not subscribe to the law of dy dx they fight it are we together mm. You anoint somebody say what is this with this oil they write all kinds of articles titan is a scam by men of god to raise money you see them and then at the end of that ungodly blog they now say my name is pastor so so and so i'm a pastor with living christ parish or whatever it is and that is deceptive because somebody will say ah, this is a pastor and you know carnal people will relate to those things immediately because they are carnally minded are we together anything that massages the flesh they like it once you challenge people why should you come and spend the night praying what is all this blah, 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 thing 10 hours five hours three hours please we are not human beings god gave us a brain and they say that to castigate spirituality the bible says through faith hebrews chapter 10 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 through faith we understand please give it to us through faith we understand that the world systems 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 were framed by what please help me they were not framed by cement and water they were framed by an invisible substance called the word of god so that the things which were seen were not made of things which do appear that's why god tells somebody that by this time next year you will be a landlord and spirit wants to receive but the carnality in his mind will fight it how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and he says have you forgotten the power of the highest this is the mystery that makes things happen i want to show you why we don't get results god has declared that this is a year of triumph but only spiritual people can receive a carnal man receives not the things of the spirit neither can he understand them why because they are spiritually discerned let me tell you how to know you are not growing by how much you rely so much on your senses and how embarrassed you are 
to be spiritual about life because there are people who are embarrassed to be spiritual not just that they don't like it it's a thing of shame it's a thing of shame oh you are playing and just playing a worship song and it's entering your spirit i beg we are human beings a worship song entering my spirit what is there you are listening to all kinds of music you don't know the difference are you seeing now many people in church you have a selection there's gospel music there's another one by a, 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 a secular artist that you want i don't have a problem with secular artists i only have this a problem with the spirits behind them i love them as people but there's a spirit behind them music is not all about melodies music is about sounds and the access that those sounds give spirits into your life so someone tells you look i went to school this i went to school he said much learning make me mad i went to school please allow me to play this song so you just play women of faith for a while just to ease the guilt of feeling carnal then somewhere in the selection something just comes babylon babylon then to witchcraft to witchcraft and you are lying down your body is sleeping your spirit does not sleep and something is happening to you how many of you have listened to a message and fell asleep and it continued playing and you followed it how many of you were sleeping and you were acting what that message was saying it now becomes graphic not just that you are hearing suddenly you find yourself in scenarios doing certain things making confessions these are spiritual things the ancient knew this we who are modern people have become so bankrupt of spirituality pastors let your people be spiritual don't pity them because they prayed five minutes and they're feeling tired and you say no you know our church there are balloons everywhere let's not make people feel you are praying and somebody falls down and the way his head hits the the, the chair even you you say Kai. hallelujah amen let's stop why do you stop a baby when he's walking and he tries to fall you allow them hi yes you say sorry but you don't stop the work we must be spiritually minded that's why the gifts of the spirit cannot flow in us we're not spiritual that's why you cannot believe that god can open you up that's why when you hear testimonies the testimonies come to a carnal mind and you start looking at the people scientifically i hope they are lying hepatitis cancer this lady that i know about allah it's just that koinonia we everybody will just keep quiet but me we 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 know at that were you blind blind when because of how people are carnally minded there are people who don't believe anything even if they see somebody fall down they will still say somebody pushed him somewhere Hapa. believers you know sometimes when people argue i say ah, ah. prophecy you hear them say they gave somebody the names of people maybe there are people doing it but is it easy to read to to keep names try it is it easy to act like that carnality because we are not spiritually minded if by next week god opens a door for david down we can look and people will now say this guy he touched something we always credit unusual happenings to the realm of the spirit that is a clue that to remain unusual you must remain in the spirit you are like mere men there is nothing worth celebrating the dominion mandate is a restoration into a life of spirituality that the spirit realm governs the physical realm yes it does the spirit realm you must build yourself the divine nature of god the character of god the second dimension let's look at it quickly is the likeness please give it to us again genesis 1 26 likeness talks of the functionality how god functions the image of god talks about who god is his being but his likeness talks of how he walks mm. believers there are some of you who god saved many people through your hands but you don't know how to build them because you have not been taught the first thing 
is to help them become spiritual that's why when we when people get born again here we introduce them to the prayer department not just to be workers in the house why because praying they are filled with the holy ghost they are praying you begin to teach them the value of the word of god you begin to teach them the value of communion you begin to teach them the value of corporate fellowship these are foundations then when they are strong then you begin to teach them how to walk like god you start teaching them speech everybody says speech the first teaching on how to function like god is how to speak like him hmm. you reign you reign you reign you reign Kadosh. you are mighty on your throne you reign you reign you reign you reign Kadosh. you are mighty on your throne Then you begin to learn that he has made us unto our God. Listen, kings and priests. Your priesthood talks of your ministry to God. Your ministry spiritually. That kingly dimension talks of governance and legislature. As a priest, the jurisdiction is a secret place. The place of incense. The place of ministry where you send that incense it will rise to heaven the prayers of the saints the intercession fellowship communion koinonia that's priesthood then you take away that priestly regalia and you put on your crown and your signet ring and you hold your scepter and step out that is legislature that is governance everyone must manifest this king priest dimension you are a priest when you come to the house of God you are ministering to God you are offering up worship and intercession for the saints you are advocating for the destinies of men you are communing with God Almighty that's priesthood then you take on that regalia of kingship and then you legislate and the Bible says where the word of a king is there is please help me where the word of a common man is there is sound but where the word of a king is so i have been made a king and a priest not unto my village unto god and so i can legislate listen the first thing that must begin to change in your life to prove that you are functioning like god is your speech your speech ah we are the weak ones we are the ones who are this and that uh -uh you know the bible says do not say before an angel i made a mistake your speech it matters are we together your your words begin to be cultured by the word of god you don't speak all kinds of things and invoke woes upon yourself your communications become spiritual bless you good morning sir Oh, Aluta Continua, Victoria Escarta, you are prophesying. Others are speaking, they are not kings. But you, you have become a believer, you have been redeemed, yet you are still speaking. You have come out of Egypt, Egypt is still in you. And now, when you speak, you are sending sounds to the realm of the spirit. And you are programming things. They speak and it doesn't happen. You speak and it happens. The suffering continues. You massage hardship pressure puts you and pushes you and everything that comes out is your hey why you why you and, and you, you all this kind of very very unbelieving talk hallelujah you hear a bad report in the name of jesus christ a thousand may fall by my right that's a king speaking ten thousand by my by my right side none shall harm me only with my eyes will i see and behold and, uh, the reward of the wicked ah i will make sure you don't marry and she tells you to your face and you smile a cause causeless shall not stand there is a mystery that no you see all this threat the woman said this ah, ah a cause causeless shall not stand are we together yes will you ever finish this house the hand of zerubbabel 
had started this work it's not something you just reminisce in your mind it must be focalized it must be focalized i am the head and not the tail i am above and not beneath the gentiles come to my light lord favor surrounds me like a shield this is a believer talking let me tell you what ordinary people would do the people in our villages know this you see what they do during festivals the major activity in festival is talking and dancing then death follows later on in the evening people start dying because people are talking talking chanting things you are moving around shakata balakata you just sense a presence that is not of god uh, don't sit and say Kai, i'm not sure be sure by praying in tongues start tongues first let let praying in tongues precede you while you are verifying so that should in case you can be praying and hear a shout from another room and say oh i see There are human beings that carry spirits they are innocent they are on the way they are on their way coming to your house to introduce spirits not unwillingly but all of a sudden you sense an urge and you begin to pray and they call you and say sorry i just feel like not coming and you know that not only have they revealed something to you they themselves need to be helped you can easily know the spirits that control men by their reaction when you pray because the spirit influenced them to act in certain ways that's why many of you when you finish praying in your house that's the day everybody quarrels you i teach you the mystery now the moment you pray agitations from everyone you go you enter your room and the kindest person in your room is attacking you the devil is sending a response if you know you attack him back with joy 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 when you turn to canada don't shout at me yes i'm coming back from koinonia say you claim you are coming back from the church and look at how you match this i'm sorry it's okay you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh, kadosh you are mighty on your throne break forth thou fountains of the deep and we kadosh so you learn how to speak by faith mark 11 22 23 if thou shalt say give it to us jesus is teaching the disciples how kings speak he's teaching them the language of royalty listen this thing is not just some some you know many believers after walking for a while we claim that those who do these things are baby christians it's a joke a principle that jesus himself introduced nothing in your life will ever change until you sustain capacity to command it to he told you has thou commanded thy morning if you don't command it something else will impregnate your morning and jesus answering said unto them have faith in god the correct rendition there is have the faith of god operate like him for verily i say unto you now whoever shall say to what say to what so it is okay to speak to things not just to human beings jesus our high priest spoke to a mountain spoke to a tree who told you they don't hear biology did not teach you that they hear but jesus the spiritual teaches you that they can hear who told you the earth does not hear who told you that when you stand and speak over your family miles and kilometers apart they don't hear so you can stand and begin to legislate they call you at home and they say in the last three days everybody has been sick you say okay i know what to do and sometimes it's not just becoming a priest you jam the door put your crown carry your regalia i send the wind on errand carry the anointing from here to that location you must believe this thing i'm teaching you i'm programming you to be spiritual and how to function like god if thou shalt say unto this mountain be thou removed that means when you speak to things you must be specific specific give us this day what do you want 
ah, I, I want i want to do well that's a vague and careless prayer you must call it by name whatsoever adam called that was the name thereof so you name your destiny peace you name your marriage joy are we together you don't turn and say this stupid husband no way my marriage is heaven on earth i call it what it is I refuse to be poor i reject it it doesn't glorify god it doesn't help me fulfill my assignment i decree and declare favor surrounds me if there is a garrison of favor men are coming to bless me today this is a king speaking you are impregnating your morning while others are sleeping you are speaking Shagato kaskariada. favor comes in the name of jesus no accidents no nothing I am immune to activities of witches. I am above. I come from above. While you are speaking, somebody is sleeping and laughing at you. By evening, they tell you the person is in the hospital. When he comes back home, he will never laugh at you again when you are speaking. That laughter is, a, is mockery. Mockery is initiated by a spirit. When Jesus wanted to raise the dead and he said the dead was sleeping, people who were crying turned and started laughing they mocked him and said get out of the house go out get out of the house i want to raise the dead and when he was alone he said little girl talita kumi i say unto you arise are we together yeah when abraham had a conversation and he heard that god was speaking about a child sarah had it and laughed that laugh was sarcasm one of the proofs that somebody has a wicked spirit living in him is how sarcastic he is when believers make faith proclamations over their destiny you see someone while he's jumping his shoe has already caught and you laugh you see that kind of laughter is a spirit it's not just an act it's not just a negative disposition that's why when we say pray and speak and other people stand and they're wondering ah, ah, you mean this is how these people speak that's what that's what brought us here we acted like him shabranda kaskia in the name of jesus people are blessed tonight the miracle service is a blessing koinonia is a blessing everything flourishes in this ministry because a word waters it words are powerful god rules the earth by the word of his power so you learn the speech of the kingdom you learn how to manifest faith but one of the things that you also learn are the systems of the kingdom i'm teaching you how to be like god let me teach you a deep mystery our time is gone i'll teach you this and then we'll just pray we'll continue next week have you been blessed god never does anything in the bible as a process twice read your bible god's system is to initiate things once and build a system around them for continuity believers hear me i want to teach you how to function like god that's why many businesses fail that's why many people cannot carry out the dominion mandate we'll discuss it next week when we talk of governance he says be fruitful then he says what multiply replenish subdue you can't do those things if you do not understand god's system so god initiates a process as a template then designs a system around it watch this god created man as our dispensation knows once and never had to create man again are we together he created man with the woman in him and then he brought the woman out and designed a system in them and says continue the result of that reproduction 7.2 billion people on the earth in spite of an average of eight people that die per second the earth is still growing because a man built a system systems are powerful are you hearing what i'm saying systems are what powerful when you do business by repeating the same thing you are not acting like god you create a product this is what many people have done google and all of that they don't know about you yet you carry their laptop because there is a system they made it once that's why coca-cola and the rest they have different branches around the world what did they program in those branches systems everybody say systems the greatest conglomerates in the world today operate through systems the same thing happening everywhere the catholics roman catholics i love them among other reasons because of the power and the dexterity 
of their systems systems maintain consistency it is how god functions god has not needed even when man fell when he was about to wipe the people in noah's days he still preserved the seed and out of those eight families new beginning he started another race systems jesus came as the firstborn of the begotten he died and nobody has had to die for his sins again a system of salvation whoever believes in him shall not perish are we blessed yes africans do not understand the systems of the kingdom so we do the same thing again and again do you know why god created things like videos systems so i don't have to preach the same message twice i preach it once and it is captured in a system and while i'm sleeping i am multiplying the influence to millions of people it's called systems don muen has never met with you yet you have been blessed by his ministry the anointing also obeys systems that's why everybody in every corner listening to don muen's songs will feel the anointing think about it you are not a leader if you do not master building systems when i learned this principle it made my life easy look at how god built a system god himself transferred governance to man and programmed that man and handed the earth to him systems now man is mishandling the earth largely but it's a system the first crops that came out of the earth the bible says god himself planted i hope you know read your bible god planted trees systems and then in the tree he built systems what is another name for that system a seed this is how god operates a seed is not money a seed is a mystery that represents the system of continuity continuity in every man born of a woman there is a seed that represents potentials for continuity in every woman there is a womb that receives a seed as potentials for continuity so once there is a seed and there is a womb there is reproduction hear me once there is a seed and there is a womb there is what reproduction a seed without a womb cannot bring reproduction a womb without a seed cannot bring reproduction you need to find the wombs of there are many wombs on earth a woman's womb is only an adumbration of many other wombs the morning has a womb every day has a womb you can impregnate it with words and it will give birth in the daytime the pregnancy that happened in the night can be delivered for you in the daytime your mind is a womb information are the seeds when you plant informations in your mind like a woman gets pregnant over time it will deliver to you and change your life are we blessed god never does the same thing twice when you find out that you are trying to do the same thing as a leader the dominion mandate is not working in your life there must be a system of continuity let me tell you is one of the reasons why we never grow and never flourish how you know there is no system in your life is that your absence stops continuity when your absence stops continuity then there is no system so you are the ceo of the company you travel for two weeks you come back and meet hellfire there's no system nobody knows what to do no system if i'm not around for one year in koinonia it will still continue running the only thing that will be missed is my unique grace and anointing why systems hmm. that's how pastors should train pastors you should be if 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 pastor alpha pastor femi and promise are all my pastors for instance if you hear pastor alpha you should not feel bad that i was not there that systems i have reproduced myself in him when you hear him you will miss me i love it every time i'm not around and people send me a text they say apostle we miss you but god koinonia was fire i said that's right systems 
but because of our inferiority and this village mindset that we have grown with every time you are not around and things don't work you are happy do you know why that's why many leaders do not mentor and train others because they think it is their way by exclusively capturing knowledge and keeping it how many people have died with secrets that can turn the lives of people how about anointings no if he carries the same anointing as i'm carrying will he ever respect me again look at god he didn't wait for you to be renewed he gave you the holy spirit straight up immediately after confession he granted you the holy spirit he didn't say change no he granted you the holy spirit to help you part of the ways that we rule and dominate is by building systems around things your prosperity is not something that is in the hands of god today your prosperity has been programmed in a system are you hearing what i'm saying god can in the systems are supervised so it's not like they are random there is still an individual supervising them the same way you put systems you can come and look at it and you can decide to influence it that's a sign that you are the owner of the system somebody can slaughter someone as a thief and go back home and get his wife pregnant that system will not stop because he's a wicked man now you'll go to hell if he doesn't repent but as far as that pregnancy is concerned an unbeliever who does not know god taps into god's system of wealth and abundance hallelujah i was telling the school of ministry students that there's something i'm going to teach them about finances that have not touched and have not taught any of the sets ah it's a revelation that god gave me that i mean if i teach you that and you don't prosper i don't know how to help you again i i don't know how to help you systems let me give you a little tip of the iceberg that being employed forever till retirement is a cause because in god's system you start under people but eventually the goal is for you to be established yourself so the spirit of servitude is such that you continue to serve a man if you not everybody will have platforms like churches businesses but even under those platforms there must allocate a place that allows your grace to function that is the spirit of god and is the program of god that's why he carved out earth and gave man but he gave man delegated authority that means it is exousia but it is still supervised so he can call man to order like pharaoh could still call joseph to order but pharaoh did not interrupt it is the system we run koinonia with that's why sometimes you never come and see me check ah, have the leaders fixed this flower well systems there are men of god you are preaching you are preparing sermon they just call you and say one wire has caught you bike by yourself to sabo and buy the wrong wire and bring it back before you finish you you forgot everything and then you are stressing yourself when you are doing everything by yourself it's a sign that you are not functioning like god let me show you why many of our parents are under stress they did not mentor the young people so they kept doing everything now the youngest person in the family is 31 yet it's still father and mother that is providing food because they did not teach them how education does not teach you how it just enlightens your mind it is mentorship it is discipleship that teaches you how so a man of god starts a ministry and there are ordinary people and then you start teaching them how to prosper you show them the pathways to the anointing are we together you don't hide it there's nothing to hide these are the secrets you guide them you mentor them they receive measures of that anointing that is upon you you have built a system and then they begin to function the key to hardship is to not be able to reproduce yourself through systems you will pay the price and you will never last everything that has lasted and outlived the founders subscribe to function like god we're going to pray dominion the chaos in our society today is because we have not conformed to his image and his likeness 
his divine nature and his functionality you see why it's important to get people saved because that is the condition that can guarantee the potentials for dominion ye must be born again that's why we make altar calls that's why we are still going to make altar call tonight because there are people scattered inside outside who need jesus now most preachers don't tell you why they just say come to jesus there is a hellfire somewhere to burn the living daylight out of you and you run out of fear you are born again and you don't know what you ran from and to what dominion this is not just the issue of heaven it does not take so much to be assured of heaven because it's not something you do by yourself but when it has to do with your reigning listen the degree to which you have become like god in his image and his likeness is the degree to which you measure your success and your prosperity are you seeing why life cooperates with others life cooperates with god and everybody who functions like him life was designed to cooperate with god alone if you are not god life will not cooperate with you so our needless sufferings and pains is because we have fabricated methodologies by ourselves attempting to get god's result our way let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your own someone is rising beyond every shadow every shackle please rise up on your feet let go rise darkness trembles in your holy life let go let it rise tonight darkness trembles in Listen, I want you to look at your life carefully. We're going to pray now. You can trace every negative thing to your life, to your inability to have conformed to the image or the likeness. There are troubles and sicknesses that have come to us today. High blood pressure because of worry. When the peace and the joy of God is in you. Listen, there is no drug that can give you peace. There is no drug that can give you joy. When you smoke cocaine and snuff all kinds of things, they don't give you peace. They attempt it. You know why people try getting high and they take substance? They are looking for peace. They are looking for joy. They are attempting to use things. Life was designed to respond to you once you are a possessor of the gift of righteousness and then abundance of grace that comes through knowledge through knowledge the bible says good understanding giveth favor but the way of the transgressor is hard could it be hear me that this is the missing link in your ministry could it be that this is the missing link in your business could it be that this is the missing link in your family why are things not working i'm always fighting with my wife i think i made a mistake i married a wrong woman it's a lie i think i and my children are stubborn there may be something you are fighting your children because you are trying to force them you are violating something about the dominion mandate you don't force people you give them a revelation you force your children to wear your, the cloth you want you force them to read the course you want every time you force men rebellion is inevitable that's why the children revolt but when you give them a revelation you see that god never forces us i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing but here's my advice choose life why so that you can live in other words i want you to live and if you must live the key is choosing life not i force you to live that's what parents are doing and that's why children revolt when you resort back to giving them revelations look it looks like i'm hard on you but it's because i love you i've made mistakes in my own life and i want you to be a great gentleman i'm proud of you and i see potentials that gentleman by himself will start talking in well by himself will stop dressing like rags and remove all those things and start babbing well and not looking like a thief the gentleman will subscribe immediately because you gave them revelation but when you use force on people you are acting as the antichrist man was not mentioned 
in every element that was given that man should dominate man was not given there are pastors that dominate members and they never see they are anointed but people never like them they can walk into your house any day anytime cook for me fry chips for me i'm a man of god add this and that for me after all elijah told the shunammite elijah did not force her home. the woman had a right to refuse the trouble in the world is a negligence of the dominion mandate nobody was born rich nobody was born poor are we together people program themselves something in my life my life is hard creation is hostile to me in the garden of eden nothing fought adam nothing satan was still alive but adam was immune he only gave access lift your voice and pray and say lord what key do i need to apply to my life please pray pray why are things not working in my life he spoke and said let them have dominion why is my marriage not working why is my job not working why are doors closed over my life why do people hate me i'm anointed why is my church not growing why can't i experience the anointing of the holy spirit why am i poor and broke and begging at all times let hope rise darkness trembles in your own sing it one more time yeah. let hope rise tonight darkness trembles in your own hallelujah hold on genesis please give us something just came into my heart and i want to share it because genesis chapter 4 we are going to read verse 8 let me show why you why our world is a wicked world because you see every time people fail instead of taking responsibility that i am violating the principles and the laws of dominion usually we look for people to fight the bible says and cain this was after the sacrifice are we together now the sacrifice of abel was taken and the sacrifice of cain was rejected what was wrong violation of patterns violations of systems are we together now cain got angry cain can be your uncle cain can be your senior brother you see where enmity came from i am the senior brother in this family how can this younger one be successful that's what was happening there are men who fight their wives there are others who fight their younger ones there are people who hate themselves and the bible says it came to pass that when they were in the field that cain rose up against abel his brother and slew him what fruit of the spirit was missing no love no love no love are we seeing there now next verse and the lord said unto cain listen where is abel thy brother and he said i know not that's the liar there at work in him the manifestation of satan at work am i my brother's keeper no kindness no he had become hardened and wicked verse 10 listen he says and he said what hast thou done the voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground verse 11 he says and now thou art caused from the earth which had opened her mouth to receive thy blood oh dear i think i've lost myself the verse i'm looking for i think is the verse before verse 8 that says um cain was angry and god told him if you have done well 
will it not be accepted maybe it's, i'm sure it's the verses other verses in front we'll leave it because of time that's the scripture i was trying to look for that after cain met with god and was angry god told him come on that why are you angry that i accepted your brother's sacrifice and rejected yours if you did it well will it not be accepted but if you do not do it well sin lie it at your door i think it's before yes it says give us verse six verse six we'll read six and seven and the lord said unto cain thank you this is the verse thank you media why art thou what angry god is speaking to you now emoji why are you angry at another man's church that the church is increasing and you are not increasing businessman why are you angry at another man's business why are you angry that uh, your sister is having her children well cultured he says and why is thy countenance falling that's frustration verse 7 if thou doest well according to patterns shall not thy shall thou not be accepted then it says and if thou doest not well sin lieth at thy door see let me tell you every time you don't do well you will not get results and when you don't get the results anger frustration will come in that's why you hate successful people there are times that you see somebody with a nice car and just say thieves all these young pastors they are the ones who know how they are manipulating you see someone anointed and you begin to speak cynicism is a product of not obeying the dominion mandate was given to all men everybody say all men the ministry god called specific people into ministry but capacity to execute the dominion mandate legislature and governance reproduction fruitfulness the capacity to subdue was given to all men there's no need for jealousy lift your voice and insist and say lord from tonight you are giving me enlightenment I have the gift of righteousness knowledge is causing grace to be abundant for me i insist that i begin to reign 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 pray we're rounding up i insist that i begin to reign pray no one may have achieved certain things from where you come from but you are the game changer light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light my life light me lord like menorah light me lord Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, pray it, light my life light my light light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord hallelujah I'm rounding up listen there are many of us seated here if I ask the number one need of people here right now is finances because of recession do you know why there are people sitting and waiting for God to change their financial situation I guarantee you in the name of the Lord it will never change if you are waiting for it to change one day the kingdom has a system built in the price you have to pay is Lord light me open my eyes where am I missing it is it that I'm not tithing is it that I don't have relationships I'm not building value where am I missing it 
because there are people nigeria is suffering today because we are missing something in the dominion mandate we don't produce we are not fruitful we are not reproducing so the earth is fighting us hallelujah let me give you the prayer point you are going to say lord show me the key some of you already have some keys but there is a key you need you can look at it and never see it until it is shown to you a man can receive nothing except it is given that you are opening the bible does not mean illumination is entering you lift your voice and cry concerning that issue that attempts to dominate you open my eyes i can continue to be sick forever Lord, I'm tired of financial struggles. I'm tired of hardship. I'm tired of being carnal. I'm tired of being weak. It is in my destiny to be spiritual, supernatural, anointed, divine, full of knowledge, full of grace. Pray, pray. Shagada bakata praska da balia kata proseze de bash. Embra kato kusoto praka tosheka tata rakata. Rakata kata kata baratos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. I want us to pick. I tell you, don't miss next week's meeting. I will piece some things. I will show you God's system of governance and legislature. And why certain things don't obey you when you speak we are taking it gradually there are some of us nothing works for you you pray no answer you prophesy no answer nothing divine I will show you why next week hallelujah one last prayer let's take the first command that was given to man be fruitful I like you to cry and prophesy I told you that the first way to function like God is your speech command everything that has refused to to blossom in your life your spiritual life your finances your relationships your career your academics those who are students your exams are, is coming pray it won't be like before again no it won't be like before again i program my reality I determine my reality. I program my reality. I'm a speaking spirit. A speaking spirit. A creative spirit. Joshua Selman, be fruitful. Koinonia, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. In business, be fruitful. In ministry, be fruitful. In your body, be fruitful. No barrenness, no barrenness, no barrenness. Everything works together for my good. I prophesy fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Say tonight marks a turnaround in my life. I create my realities. I stop letting things just happen. I make them happen. I speak like God. I make decrees like God. I speak to both animate and inanimate things and I declare they must respond to me say in the name of Jesus I speak to my health 
I speak to my finances I speak to my academics I speak to my job I speak to ministry I speak to business I speak to my body hear the word of the Lord be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful hallelujah give Jesus a shout of praise you walk with this and see the way things will begin to be altered in your life walk with this and see the way you will begin to create realities walk with this and you will see yourself exercising dominion and then you will see triumph now thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph always not sometimes hallelujah keep standing everyone inside and outside give me a few minutes and we're done we spoke about the first condition for to subscribe back to the life of authority and dominion i said the first thing is your natural birth everyone hearing me is hearing me because you were born but the second and more important than the first is your rebirth there are people here who whilst hearing me preach the holy spirit began to speak to you and said you need to make your ways right don't play games you can deceive men but it will affect your capacity for dominion you know the things happening around your life and family and there are others you handed your life to jesus christ but at a point in your life things went you know just haywire and you left the things of god you are not serious and you are saying man of god if you will make a call and include me i will come here those two categories of people those surrendering their lives truly and sincerely you are not playing games overflow one two three online connect with us but you are in here i believe there are people in here there are people outside please you have one minute wherever you are i want you to make a bold step and come out here i want to pray with you we want to initiate you into that family of dominion don't wait for someone to come make your way make your way quickly appreciate them i believe someone is coming somewhere i believe someone is coming somewhere if there are people coming from outside clear the way for them god bless you my dear god bless you people are coming encourage them koinonia you're saying man of god i'm tired of watching the way my life is i'm tired of watching the way my family is going i trust you and i know that if you pray for me that will be the beginning god bless you god bless you don't be afraid don't be ashamed don't let anyone stop you you are saying man of god i gave my life to christ one time but i think i need to start afresh i can't lie to myself i need a fresh encounter join them quickly join them quickly god bless you join them quickly i'm tired of watching the devil prevail over my life koinonia appreciate them those coming from outside any of the overflows make your way to the front it's a new beginning for you it's a new beginning for you in the name of jesus no power will stop you hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for making this bold decision you see gone are the days when when people come out for altar calls they come out as if they are they are responding they are going for a burial a, an altar call is like a speech and price giving ceremony you are being handed over something that no currency no amount can buy i want you to be very bold about it are we together lift your right hand and i want you to say this after me say it with faith jesus is in this place say lord jesus i believe in you i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for me I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from today I am born of God I am a child of God the life of God is at work in my spirit I declare that from today I live a life of dominion I live a life of victory the power of the flesh the power of sin the power of Satan is broken over my life forever in Jesus name keep your hands lifted I declare your sins forgiven in the name of Jesus I declare that the Spirit of God finds expression in your life from today everything that has dominated you I decree and declare that you rise above it I speak to you that this is the beginning of a new season in your life let the grace the glory the power the wisdom of God begin to find expression in your life in the name of jesus christ you will move 
forever upwards and you will never go down again in jesus name i pray amen and amen thank you for making this bold decision now please all of you this way i just want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they will require a few details from you and communicate a few informations please cooperate with them god bless you let's honor them quickly let's honor them quickly hallelujah praise the lord dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline